Fire Emblem Engage is the brand new game from the series that is all about playing chess with characters you would laugh at if you saw them dressed up at your local Walmart. <laughs> And Engage continues a tradition with grid tactical gameplay where you have to take time thinking about your next move while at the same time having characters that talk to each other like this. Ah, divine one, you look so shiny when you sweat. And what's even more funny is that this game was actually leaked way before it's revealed by a Chinese account. And everyone saw this and thought, <laughs> I mean really. This is your main character? There's no way that's real! <laughs> the hair looks like your vomit after a night of chugging Pepsi and brushing teeth with Colgate. This is so, it's, it's real. <laughs> and it's just hilarious seeing all this in hindsight with Alika posting a smiley face for the validation. The red blue oh, is real! Yeah. It's actually so funny that people thought this was a hotel lobby and not that it was actually a kitchen. I keep telling you, Fire Emblem characters can't cook! I did not know pain was a flavor. So yes, as the very delayed celebration of the Fire Emblem's anniversary, it's time to get engaged by using the past characters of the franchise as JoJo stands. Please just shut the hell up. And what would I think of it after Three Houses brought in so many new people with its intricate multi-war story? What would the next mainline game be all about? Hiya, papaya. And so would I like it even more? I'll stick around, Bucko. It's a long ride. So starting up. POP SONGS IN MY JRPG?! Me when the chicken tendies aren't overcooked. Engage. Jeez, ask me out first. So after spending minutes reading due to buying the season pass that Nintendo loves to do in all their games now. Season pass. More time to pick a form. And stop staring at me with them big ol' eyes. Oh. Nah, actually, give me the big anime eyes. And what name would I use? Well, I usually pick a name that's consistent with my brand, like the channel mascot, Ramona. Pepsi! What, you're not thirsty too? No! 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 So we start with the cutscene with 10 times more frames than anything from Three Houses, as a group of very clashing designs paired with Fire Emblem characters from the past fight these enemies. Our final battle lies ahead. Oh, but how long to beat said the game would be longer than that. And so we gotta fight this funny looking dude, but the goal is to not let Pepsi get defeated. I think it's a bit too late for that. And this acts as the tutorial where you can zoom around. And it's the usual turn based on a grid, you move your characters to spaces to attack, looking at all these stats and numbers to hopefully not get counted in one shot. It's happened to the best of us. And you get different weapons and class types, it's got a weapon triangle for colours and all these other numbers. But if you see the big flashing white bar on the enemy, you know you're winning. And with this question mark person, when the meter is full, you can engage. Which doesn't require bending the knee, but fusing to do special moves. And you win and oh, the game is is just done. And the dude is like, well done. You truly are the firest of emblems. Oh, that whole thing was just a dream. Pretty vivid dream, to be honest. So then where are we? And what the heck, we can talk? Hello there. Well, it turns out we were sleeping for so long. Uh, how long? A thousand years. A thousand. And these are the stewards of the Divine Dragon, who is us. And they're waiting for us to wake up. This is Vanda, and these two are. My name's Clem. Pleased to meet you. And I'm Fram. We're twins. What kind of parents named their twins rhyming names? We think you're smuggling drugs. I stand corrected. God, twins are so creepy. They even are blinking in unison. But we seem to have lost our memories. Yet a visit to Letho's castle might help us jog the memories when we meet the Queen Lumera. I hope so. Uh, are we standing in front of a PNG? Well, JPEG, since this is a Nintendo Switch game. Bro, at some point, these Switch games are just gonna make the console go. I'm on fire! Savannah says where we slept was at the Somniel. Only us and people blessed by the dragon can enter, making it very secure. Also, it's like 500 feet up in the sky, which isn't actually that high in the better conversion system. They pray next to you, like this. Then they just talk for a while. Like they're chatting to a friend. I see. Thanks for filling me in, Fram. You too, Clan. <laughs> now, while this was happening, I thought the music was a teensy bit loud, so press oh, yeah, start to open the like menu.
I guess they change what Start does in the newest update. What is it with me skipping cutscenes accidentally in Nintendo games? Well, all we miss is that Pepsi has a strange ring. But we get attacked by these weird monsters called the Corrupted. As the twins get separated and we have to save them, maneuvering the characters to make their way slowly upwards. But that character from before says, Use the Force, Pepsi. And we use the ring to summon... Who? Hey, she's skipping the tactical turn-based gameplay! So there are 12 emblems, Marth being the first, and they add different stat changes to you, while also getting to fuse with them, making the blue part of your hair, well, less blue. However, we win, but more corrupted keep appearing like the zombies in Plants vs. Zombies, but instead of sunflowers, we got... A freaking dragon! I'm somewhere that's not what I would call Earth. I'm seeing freaking dragons, and oh yeah, I'm talking to a cop! And the dragon turns into... At last, you are awake. Oh my. Blue-haired women be like... What a joy it is to see you. So this is our mother. Gee, being a parent and fire emblem, I can't wait for the ending of the game where she will be alive. <laughs> So now the game teleports us to the castle. Or not. Whoa, I can run! So yeah, after battles, you got this post-game scene on the map where you're trapped to this glass cage. Release me! Where you can grab items. I'll take some nuts! While the characters just stand there waiting for you to talk to them. Not voiced at all. As we then get a lore summary of the game, where the world Ilios is being these four nations, with Lethos being the divine dragon's home in the center. Where a thousand years ago, there was a war with a fell dragon, who was less dragon, and more like they stuck a snake on a dragon. Which actually reminds me when I had a toy crocodile with a hole in its mouth and I shot the toy cobra in it to make it look like this. Who starts a conversation like that? I just sat down! Certified, they somehow brought in heroes from the other worlds, called Emblems, and Lumera sealed the evil away. I sense a resurrection. The binding weakens. If his shadow stretches across the what land... What the heck? The mouth moves? That's kinda creepy. We well, we arrive. So this is Lethos Castle. Pepsi then reveals how the corrupted give her the heebie-jeebies as their corpse is revived by the fell dragon. And a dark presence has re-emerged called Sombron. And Lumera says we need a plan to stop them. It's been quite some time, Lumera. Oh hey, Marth. How's your connection? Yeah, so like, these emblems are Fire Emblem characters from previous games. Look, I know who Marth is, okay? He's just a made-up character Lucina was cosplaying. Anyway, are they having like an out-of-body experience getting called into this world? Like, what are their friends and families thinking while all this is going on? Also, we move to the ring chamber, and they really love that animation style of characters standing still with these jump cuts. I mean, I guess it's easier to animate the scene. But come on, can't they animate the characters like walking to the scene? Do these people not know how to walk? No. So six emblems are here while the other six are spread out with the other countries to not keep all the treasure together. And every thousand years the emblems can align to do some magic thing, which is probably what Sombron wants. However, you can summon them individually like we did with Marth by chanting their names and only royal dragons can do this. So to toughen us up, Lumera gives us a practice match against puppets she made. And you learn more about the different units like how some can attack from a distance and so on. I also kind of miss how in three houses you could see the map in first person close up. Like this camera feels very vertical for my taste. I mean, after every battle, you can physically walk around the map so it is modeled, but I mean, you couldn't just let us see it up close? Oh yeah, actually, what engine is this game using? Unity! Really? Also, you can break the enemies if you use a weapon that has an advantage, which knocks it out of the hand, not letting them counter back that turn. And yes, this can also happen to you. Clan is also a mage who is really good against heavy armors. Vanda is an axe user on a horse, which gives him big range. And Frame is a cheat adept, which is like a fighting monk, but I honestly didn't find any use for that class. We are the divine dragon, and as such, we don't turn into a dragon. Aww. You can also press X to read every single UI description if you want. So Lumera is like, wow, cool, you know how to use a sword. All right, no more playing nice mommy. And does another battle, this time summoning her own emblem being... Who? You know, I think this game really benefits people who have played all the Fire Emblem games. And for winning, she gives us a sword called Liberation. See, I'm being European and pronouncing the ugh. And a ring. That's more like a birthday gift, but Pepsi is like, I don't remember you being my mother, so nah. I'll accept it when I remember things. Surely you will be alive by then, right? What do you say? Pinky promise? 
All right. God damn, why is this so adorable? Well, Pepsi talks to herself before another dream. Followed by... Why are you here alone? Oh, no. <laughs> it's Coca-Cola. What was that? Was that me? Marth comes us down, and I really have to wonder about these rings. Are they duplicate consciousness of the people? Or is he literally bored in his home world and he waits for the ringing of the bell to go into the interdimensional Zoom call? Well, I haven't played his game. Maybe Zoom calls are a thing in his world. And that's cool. Live your life. But what's not cool is someone disturbing my beauty sleep. As people have broken into the castle. Some enemies busted right through the castle walls like paper. Suddenly, bam! <laughs> Oh god, we have to defeat real people now. There are too many of them. We'll never make it to the ring vault. But hang on, to save us, Beautiful, it's right? a blonde fire emblem man! <laughs> he is Alfred, the Prince of Firenay, the land in the bottom left, and he brought his two retainers. Oh brother! These two are Boucheron and Etier. Yes, an archer! That will teach you you abomination to horses. Stay on the ground where you belong! So we finish off the general with a Marth special. That's when you're in the fusion mode, you get three turns to do things before the bar empties, and one of those turns you can do a super duper anime move. And inside we find this kid playing Star Wars who goes... But how? And they go to kill us, but Lumera sacrifices herself to save us. However, Lumera doesn't give up the rings, so the gremlin runs off, not before dropping their hard candy. As we see Lumera dying. Oh no, who could have predicted a Fire Emblem parent not surviving past the five hour mark? I do absolutely appreciate them though for trying to use healing magic, because in JRPGs, I mean bro, in gameplay we're healing all the time, surely you can use it in the cutscenes. And Lumera was extra weak because for a thousand years, she was actually slowly giving us her powers to revive us from the dead. Oh no, this is my fault. I did this. No, my dear. You have to push those thoughts Gee, away. You sure are talking a lot for someone dying due to no power. <laughs> and I timed it. It's a four minute dying scene. And she gives us Sigurd's ring and as they make a promise. pinky promise to see each other again. I swear to you, I'll be with you always and forever. Fire Emblem is a game about war and killing people. I never thought our paths would diverge so soon. Nor I. And to leave a child behind, I did that in death. Wait, you're dead, Sigurd. And how are you in the group voice call? Though I must ask, why did you come? And Alfred is like, whoopsie, I shouldn't have stopped for gas on the way, as his kingdom was under attack and he wanted Lumera's help because the corrupted are now attacking Firene. As Vander says, why not make the Somniel our base? It's way up high, the corrupted can't jump, and so this becomes our new home. And what's the first thing we should do? Thank you, universe, for creating someone so awesome and so very shiny. Oh, um, oh no, they formed a fan club for me. I have a... Fan club? Yeah, they brush their teeth with Pepsi and Colgate. It's called the I Have No Teeth fan club. Mostly full of British people. Man, Pretty but I sure would love to be able to turn down the music in this game. It's it weird a 2023 those? game doesn't have an you option bet. for this. Like but don't worry, I'll give you guys a full tour of my career, but when we stocked up with more happening people. And I gotta like clean up the place. I mean, there's horse crap everywhere. It's not a swear word when there actually is. Why do Americans think that's a swear word? But you got some zones to go to, including a room. Wow, dragons have it really easy. And all you can do here is sleep, which change the time of day. And also... Yoo-hoo, I'm here. Oh no. ASMR, just like that petting minigame from Fire Emblem Fate. The divine dragon is away! And to exit the room, you got another loading screen. Make the new console, please, I'm begging you, it's gotta have an SSD! Well, let's head to Firenay. Listen, I'm sorry for twisting your arm to come with me. Alfred, it's alright. I wanted to come. And Alfred gives us the lore. The kingdom was pretty peaceful with Solm and Brodia, but Brodia was always launching attacks on Elusia to expand the territory. And the illusions worship the fell dragon. But on the way, we see his sister and her retainers. Oh, bro! Getting this swarmed by the corrupted. I beg you to make your retreat. We'll handle this. Hang on, that sounds like Okave. What the hell? It is Okave! And Saline comes over and is like, You're the divine dragon. Oh my god, I love you. Yeah, I get that a lot. It's the hair, right? And she brings out her own emblem ring, which, by the way, it's just a ring until we summon the actual person, who is revealed to be. Who? Well, we gotta save the retainers and the villagers. Thank you for warning me. 
Here, use this to bring peace to our land. 2K? Gee, I can almost buy a Big Mac with inflation. <laughs> but since you've got many emblem rings now, you can actually give them to other characters. Saline here has the Celica ring and fuses turning her hair from white woman to anime convention. And her special ability is... I'm gonna love this ability. I've been lost? Uh, I, I have to remind you, I am playing this on hard, but no permadeath because, come on, you know me! And is it perfect timing? The hard candy begins to glow as it's a time crystal. Yes, another reason to make sure we can redo the moves in the game. To retry a chess move, so maybe Celine, I can revive her! Uh, maybe not. And so after 10 minutes of slowly making my way up, I die. Gee, how convenient I got this crystal, huh? All right, try again. <laughs> Too much. God, Pepsi sucks. Maybe I should have picked a better drink. Want a Sprite Cranberry? Well, we win and get a cutscene where we're gonna die a third time, but this person saves us. That's quite the feat. And she's just like, Oh, Teehee, just happened to be strolling past and saved you. Pepsi turns her head away to talk to her imaginary friend, and the girl is gone. How strange. And now we can wander around the town we saved, talking to the villagers and recruiting animals. Horns! And these two bozos come up like, Hey, we can join the party. We don't look as detailed as the main characters, but we can help, right? As they become the weapon and item shops in the Somniel. Speaking of... Right, I get it! So yes, I bought the expansion pass and playing Engage after all of it released, which is something that really bugs me. It seems Nintendo really likes this business model, which probably means I should wait for the full DLC to drop before making these big long videos on an entire game from them, because yes, I will be talking about the DLC story later on. But for now... Bond with me, Jimmy. Yeah, so using an emblem, you get to bond with them like two lines of dialogue and they are just, okay. For now, I mean, they're just like, wow, you're such an amazing warrior. Oh, gee, Pepsi, you're so kind. You know, you're also a cool warrior too. End scene. Gee, thanks. And yeah, you can buy weapons and items for your characters and more unlocks as you progress. Keep in mind the weapons do not have limited uses, although the healing does because, yeah, that would make the game insanely easy. Gee, I sure hope I'll have enough money by the end game in this balanced economy. And wandering around, you can find the characters just doing things in the thumbnail. With these glowing orbs as items you can pick up like spirit gems to give the characters to raise the support rank with you. And if you didn't know, supports are the only time you get to know more about these characters outside the story. And the main way to raise it is by battling next to each other or giving them these items or just chuck horse manure in their face. Whoa! The other items are food. R remember the nuts. It's nuts. And there is a lot more in this farming area where you can place these adopted animals and just admire them. Oh my god, it's a dog! <laughs> and you can do training here which boosts your stats before battles, which will be a nice relaxing time. Oh my god, I'm never doing this again! Looking good! Why the heck is it so long and requires so much mashing? I'm in actual pain! Next on our totally banging crib tour, we got the ring room. I haven't even seen this movie! Where you can... Gotcha, roll for the ring. So you get a random assortment of character rings from the game series, which only offer stat boost to the characters. Wow, this just reminds me of... Fire Emblem Heroes! Here I remember the game I had insane luck in getting my favorite characters before then I used up 500 gems and grinded all the story missions for more gems just to roll for the new OC with a very obvious design that appeals to me and it's voiced by Velvet and I didn't get her so I quit the game and played a better gacha game before returning to the heroes and getting this my first free roll. I'm very happy. La 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 la, see? Oh yeah, in this room you can polish the ring. It's already clean. <laughs> Thank you. The ring looks amazing. Marriage was a mistake. And now on the next part of my crib tour, we find the secret cave. Is it an Epstein dungeon or... Oh my. What in the world is this creature? You can name it. 
hot dog. And we can feed it the food we find to raise its rank. Wow, this really reminds me of Fire Emblem Fates. Well, I talked to more of the characters, I still gotta learn a lot more about them, like learning Etier Pop's pills since it's harder to detect. You then got this board for donations, which is weird. You would think people would donate to us since we are, you know, the holy dragon. But putting money in lets you get more bond fragments and food to find in the countries. And these are very expensive. Very, very expensive. And you can collect achievements giving us bond fragments from just playing the game and these bond fragments are used to help speed up the bonds with emblems. As say you want characters using the emblem but you don't want to grind it out in the battles, you can speed it up here. And this also helps you learn the skills to equip which can make them tougher in the field. And you can train here which lets characters randomly fight another one or emblems which actually can help boost their supports as well. Okay it's getting late, why not call it for a night? Hey it's a fine one. Oopsie. You're asleep. Oh, come on, not her You're again. Asleep. I'm no good at sounding proper. Gee. I sure love being flashbang for no absolute reason. Oh, if you don't like that time of day, you can just spend all day sleeping to swap it like you're an unemployed gamer. Well, I equip my cast with a cheapo ring since it gets an SP when they fight, which you need to use to spend on skills, so there's no reason for a character to not wear a ring. Well, unless they're shopping for a man at the club. And so we return to Farinay's castle to meet the queen. I'm asking all polite like. Come on. <laughs> I'm not in the habit of speaking to lowly vermin. That's all that you are, the lot of you. <laughs> Sorry, I had to sneeze. She's getting held hostage by this guy, who straight up reminds me of that guy from Legend of Korra. Lady Sophia. After all, her majesty can't tell us much of value if she's dead. <laughs> Sorry, I had to cough. And they won Firinay's emblem rings. You illusion scum! Get away from her! <laughs> Who's going to make us? I'm glad you've come. So Zephyr here is like, huh? seeing us and that Lumera was a holy nun of a lady. She wouldn't have kids. And while saying she didn't kill Lumera, in turn says that Elusia, the kingdom of the top right, has freed Sombron and the fell dragon has returned. And so we have to fight. Also, by the way, I did turn on the network function to see what online features this game had. And pretty much, apart from adding to the fun loading times, it adds these gold and purple rings to the map. Where if you land on them, you either get items from purple or XP or bond fragments from the gold. And this map, oh boy. So you gotta bust down the front door to enter, or there's these chests on the side, which by the way, you don't need thieves to open in this game, which is such a nice improvement, but you can then break in through the side, surprising the boss. So you should split up your party to attack on through front, and it was going very well. It's tea time! Ah! However, there's this mechanic called chain attacks. If you have a specific ally near an enemy, they can do a follow-up attack. However, every single enemy also has this feature as well. And they just won't stop gagging up on me! Plus the bosses have this revival stone, which means their health bar ain't this, but this! As they can get full health again. So this coupled with me not really liking my early team, and the goddamn chain attacks, and the fact that the enemies always seem to break me not letting me counter back, meant that I lost. However, I did not give up. No. In fact, I wasn't gonna lower the difficulty like I always do. I pushed through. Figuring out that Louis is actually insane, and with two final units after 60 minutes, I beat the level! Man, that was exhilarating! Ugh. Yeah, I'm lowering the difficulty after this. Alfred, mother is in the back room. So the plan is to stop the illusions getting the rings for Sombron. As we get Ev's one, Bashi says the kingdom has another one hidden near the Brodian border. Also, I, I, I have to say it. What is the deal with Saeed's dress? It's it's so big. And we got two random NPCs to join our team. While we see Zephyr dealing with the failed bad guy. Uh, what do you say? How about we call it even this time round? <laughs> I won't let you down again. Oh, how naive you are. After you fail me once, there is no second chance. Yeah, I can guarantee this part of the video will have the highest skip view count thing on the graph that YouTube adds. It's true. But you shouldn't say it. So she kills him and bows to a boss, the Gremlin, who weirdly sounds like a mini version of Pepsi. I was expecting to get at least one. Mini Pepsi! Oh While those two NPCs who joined, one is for upgrading our weapons, and the other... The One Piece is real! Oh yeah, you can customize Hot Dog as well. And he follows you? 
back to the world map where we got paralogs. These bonus side story kind of things, this one being in a village with a kid who acts like a doctor. I know father told me to hide, but how can I? Why does he sound like he's 50 years old? Jean. Jean is sort of the village character you see in most Fire Emblem games. Optional characters with generic stats at the start, but you can turn them into your ultimate killing machine if you want. So many who need my help. Yeah, I don't want that. Also, I don't know if people notice things, but this game has a destructible environment. <laughs> Unity engine is really kicking into overtime, huh? You just be a burden. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Not if what he did during that battle is anything to go by. If Sean wants to come, I don't mind. And so you can talk to everyone after the battle, this time people who do good in the battle, giving you bond fragments. Also, it's weird when you talk to NPCs who are picking fruit in the trees, or like in the cafe back home, the camera does this zoom on them instead of focusing on you. Like, yeah, make this random NPC front and center. Well, back to the Somnia, where we got more support between the characters. And a reminder, this is probably the best way to know about your side characters, since the story never really focuses on them. They never really get a chance to shine in the cutscenes. Homemade. Oh, Pickles! I also slept with them under my pillow. Kind of like how hens take care of their eggs. No kidding. That's weird. Oh yeah, fully customized by characters' looks, which you can see in the thumbnail, but annoyingly they don't show up in the supports. You would think supports would be the best time to see the customization. You know, characters relaxing, not wearing stuffy armor. But no, you can only see this when they walk around. Uh oh. I also tried the push-ups. Keep it up! Nice. I gave up on the push-ups and made Pepsi wear the Somni onesie because it's very adorable and not because of the furry tendency she has. And after every battle, you get one time to be woken up by someone. That I might be the one to wake And for me, it just kept being the same two people. Man, I really need some better characters soon. Zippy. Well, that's convenient. This is Yunaka. Hiya, papaya. She's the internet's favorite. Holy broccoli! You know, I actually asked Twitter and YouTube who they thought my favorite character would be in the game, and most people said Yunaka. I'm playing the lead! And I say to that, Oh, people really don't get me, huh? Yunaka says she randomly found this ring who told her to find the Divine Dragon, but she was chased by bandits and dropped it. But now that you're here, you're gonna- Aha! Right there. You see it? Yeah, a burly guy with something glinting in his hand. You must have great eyesight, Yunaka. Yeah. I have the killer's eyes. What was that? Alright. And so we load the map. Oh yeah. It's a Nintendo online game. Of course, you weirdo! And so we get the ring back and summon the emblem! Who the devil are you? Oh! It's Ash Ketchum! That means I... I'm stupid? And this map is actually really cool as it's advanced darkness that moves depending on how close your team are to it or disappears by lighting a nearby torch. Also, Warp Ragnarok is still pretty fun to surprise the enemies with. And yes, when the characters fuse, they get other hair colors like blonde or purple. So we win and Yunaka reveals she lied. He's the thief. Gee, I couldn't tell. Say what now? That stole the ring, but Micaiah's voice told her to be the very best like no one ever was. And to find the divine dragon, and so here she is. Allow me to be the first to say. Hiya, Papaya. Uh... <laughs> Hiya, Papaya. Back at ya, divine one. My team is mentally ill. So once again, exploring the map where I was kind of annoyed the characters didn't really react to events. They were just like, whoa, you're so cool, Pepsi. Or, wow, I killed so many bandits that wanted to feed their families. But at least you get some bond fragments. But Pepsi, before they leave, finds the shrewless girl again who says their name is Vale and she's missing a sibling. But Pepsi doesn't care because she notices her feet. Barefoot, hope and to Vale see you thanks again. her for the bandage and runs off. Gee, letting a little girl run off in bandit country, good work, Pepsi. What have I done? Well, back to the Somnio. Congratulations. Oh, whoops, I made it my birthday today. Guess every character is gonna congratulate me. Or just swim. Hey, uh, sw swim between the lanes, please. And because I got the DLC when I ran to this part of the Somnial, I got a cutscene revealing a bracelet, which summons DLC emblems, and the first one being... Oh, uh, hey, I know them. Oh god, what have they done to your faces? They... animate them! We were all students at the Officers Academy, 
but we led different houses. Or you could say three houses. <laughs> and their emblem is interesting in that it's three characters in one, which has a lot of abilities to use, including all their weapons, while also their bond randomly picks a character to talk with. Like here, I picked Edelgard to bond with and Claude talks instead. Look, I just had about enough of you, you brown skin funny man. Oh, man. Now also unlock the player card, which is incredibly customizable, but that's not all, because you actually get a photo shoot to pose with the characters. I do love this feature, but I kind of wish they had a facial feature edited like the Sony games, but I think it looks fine, right? Oh wait, just gotta add one more thing. <laughs> now it's art. And you can view other people's ones. I guess that is pretty funny. And I tried the final mini game, which was the worst rhythm game I've ever played, because there's no rhythm. And trust me, I played the Final Fantasy one. It stinks. It's so weird they made training be the most tedious thing in Engage, when the whole vibe is just, you know, more chill than the other Fire Emblems. I also unlocked this magic well. And in this magic well, I could access the Fel Xenolog, which is the DLC story. But I looked it up and they said to do it around chapter 16, so I probably should wait until then. But then, way down here, we got the Tower of Trials, where you can play online with people. Oh yeah, it's a Nintendo online game. We got this mode where you got a few turns to start the map, then hand it off to the internet for other players to finish, summoning their own heroes to help you out. Or you can finish off other people's ones, which probably wasn't a good idea to do since uh, they are late game. Like, what the hell is this? Then there's also a map maker where you can make ones with objects and challenge your friend's creations. Here we go! Uh, uh, has all been lost? Uh, this seems a little one-sided. Well, I tried to make one, but this Sims looking ass menu really wasn't intuitive. So then I head back to the ring room, where you can augment the emblems, which is just buffing them up. And yes, you can't have an anime game without cooking. Well, you can, but they really wanted the feature where random characters will turn up as a chef to cook for the others. Hey, isn't this feature from Fire Emblem Fates? Oh yeah, when you cook another meal but don't eat the leftovers, it just replaces it. So you can't stock up on the smelly food your team makes for you. Well, I at least want to get to know the new characters, so time to talk to Yunaka, who seems to be hiding her past. <sighs> because I lied. Again? I've never been a mercenary. You said it and it sounded nice, so I went with it. I'm sorry. I'm confused. While well, Louie here just wants to watch people. Yeah, I'm on to you. And then I get woken up by Yunaka, who I put in a swimsuit, yet for some reason the game forces her back into a default outfit. I kept the dog ears. So you wanted the weird ASMR, but you didn't want people thinking this is a Twitch bathtub stream, I see. No. So I went back to the main map and headed to the coast, which took me to this DLC area, which is for more emblem bracelets. Because basically, the lore in this game is there are only 12 rings, so the DLC ones have to be bracelets. Which means by the end, Pepsi is gonna have so much gold on her. Well, let's summon the first one. Oh no, it's Nowy. Excuse me, but who are you? Oh no, she's British. I feel like I've been asleep for a very long time. The heck Thank was that animation? That. That's not how you react to telling someone you just slept here. But then Mama made it so that I didn't need to sleep anymore. Mama? Marmite? So we bribe Tiki saying she can meet her Vegemite if she joins us, but she's like, nah, ah, but more British, and says to defeat her to prove our power. And we gotta turn off these spells on the gates to access her room, and the DLC maps are at least all unique, and I gave Yunaka the Salika ring, adding to her crazy killer vibes. Oh yeah, and with three houses, every few turns it rotates between the three, so whatever turn it is, that's who you fuse with, four different weapons. Also, I absolutely love how in this game they let you check the supports mid-fight, so if you wanted to double check, oh wait, I gotta make these two characters stand together to boost their support, you can easily do it. Well, we fight Tiki. Well, Tiki, it sure has been a while. I'm glad to see you. How have you been? Mama, you're strong.
Man, I miss the little voices the characters did when they leveled up. It added so much personality to them cheering when they killed people. And so we recruit Tiki, and I had to double take reading her abilities. Because she's got multiple attacks, stat boost, and can even add a revive stone that the bosses have to an ally. So we just use it on Pepsi and never lose? Sure, I guess. Well, we can run around and find more animals. Although apparently Pepsi doesn't know how to raise a reindeer. Look, she's half Santa. I'm sure it will be fun. Fine. Well, back to support time. <laughs> huh? What's up? You're looking at me kind of weird. Hey, wait a minute. Etie is voiced by Kurisu and Louie is Okabe. They don't have a support, no! Don't give me that crap! Anyway. Ample access to high quality leaves thanks to the Sterling tea field near my home. That's amazing! Your family's got it made, getting to drink tea this good all the time. You are either gonna love or hate this animation by the end of the game. Zippy! Well, I can check on the result of my trial run from earlier. Ow, my ears! Maybe I shouldn't watch people fix my game since they are using spoiler characters. Our conversation made for an excellent spice over an already fine tea. <laughs> the tea was fine, wasn't it? That floral note it had was almost unbelievably Bro, are they putting flowers in the tea? Come on, add some masala in there, buddy. Do you like tea, Sigurd? And if you do, want to go have a cup with me? When you offer, how can I decline? I'm sorry, his voice for the dang and rompin' V3 guy. I just can't hear anything but Shuichi whenever he speaks. That game just messed me up. I refuse to acknowledge you! You're stupid! So I did a bunch of emblem training to help the characters get more levels and also see the dialogue, which still wasn't wowing me. Pretty generic and safe with the emblems. Gee, I sure hope the characters aren't this sterile in their own games. And tried to wake up to maybe get a new character. <gasps> Divine One, how long have you been Oh, awake? I thought it was going to be like the anime thing where he wouldn't open his eyes the entire game. I could be an enemy spy. Eh, probably not though. I trust you. Lad. Man, Alfred is just so lovable. Adorkable, even. Good morning, Alfred. Morning, Celine. Training hard again, I see. Though, normally I don't find you using a shovel. That's a deep hole you've dug, too. Won't this be hazardous for the others? <laughs> oh, Celine, this isn't training. And if anything, I need to dig deeper. What are you doing? Digging. Why? Make a hole. A hole for what? More digging. I overheard the kitchen staff this morning complaining that there wasn't enough water. Bro, it really so just I'm digs a well. Man, it's so crazy. Pardon? And it wouldn't be a Nintendo game if they didn't shoehorn the amiibo. What? The, you know, the amiibo? You, who, well, yeah. Where five times a day you can use them and Fire Emblem Ones give you special outfits the characters can wear. And very annoyingly, only the Royals can wear it. Yes, and Micaiah here. Only Pepsi and Celine can wear it. I have no idea why it doesn't make any sense. The customization really feels like two step forward, one step back kind of deal. And now that we've beaten Tiki, we seemingly have opened up all the paralogs. But I will space them out, I don't want to overload my team with DLC characters if they are as busted as her. So instead, let's head back to the main world where we now have to save a new character. One you are very familiar with. Anna, but very small. Room full of treasure! Oh god, is that Bien's voice? <laughs> And she hides inside the chest to avoid the bandits as we save her and you have to split up your team taking both sides. And you set them up for tactical advantage, I set them up in a way that makes their supports go higher. We are not the same. No! We'll be together forever. What the hell? You set the ground on fire! So we save her and she's really, really tiny. I Like, the camera isn't even centered on her. Oh well, it's a good time to end today's play session. Let's come back tomorrow. Is this anime song really just gonna jump scare me every time I start? It's so cringe, why? Well, back to more wake up time. Good morning. I hate it here. All right, fine. Back to the story where we head to Brodia. Watch out! <sighs> You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. They ask who we are. We say a cool, refreshing drink, and the archer then goes, "I." <sighs> I am so, so, so sorry. I'm begging, please find it in your hearts to forgive me! 
No. So this is the second Prince of Brodia and his retainers, who don't really like us. Honored to meet you and your coterie. Yeah, welcome to Brodia. I can't say I feel very welcome. You still look like you're ready to kill us. But it's fine, right? And they walk us to the castle. However, as we cross the bridge, we meet a clown. A, a, re a real clown. Well, okay. Probably a good time to mention that the character designer of this game was asked by Intelligent Systems to come up with 50 random character designs with no rhyme or reason. Does explain a lot of the designs in this game and how they just feel just there. Not really matching a tone. And this clown is a second princess of Illusia, Hortensia. And she has an emblem ring. Hey! And she's like, Brodia, you suck, you're always invading. And Prince Alchrist is like, We are keeping your vicious, unpredictable kingdom in check. Um, uh, mmm. But her dad, King Hyacinth, told her to get the rings while her sister is attacking the Brodian castle. So she attacks with her two retainers, Rosado and Gold Mary. On this horizontal map with some choke points, making it very tactical. Also, Lapis here has a smash weapon, which looks like Cloud's Buster Blade, that can knock back enemies you attack. But as we reach the Cloud, she summons the ring's emblem, this time being evil because red. And it's Lucina. Holy moly, it's Communist Lucina. Well, time to send in the clown car. No, you had to be stubborn. I'm stubborn. So we win and they retreat as we rush to Brodia's castle, but not before we see Vale interviewing for Dragon Ball Z as she looks for her sister. Take that! And you really thought I was gonna head straight to the castle? Of course not. We gotta go back to Somniel for the silly support. Your smile is especially radiant. Oh, gross. Cut the sweet talk before I start puking rainbows. I enjoy our bracing conversations almost as much as the tea. Right. Conversations. I do enjoy chatting with you. So much so, I kind of worry I might slip up. Wait, what? You, you mean she actually has a dark past? I was just joking! You're a killer! Zippy! Oh yeah, you know how I mentioned the interview on the designs? I didn't mean that in a bad way. Because actually it was a nice change of pace. Not all the designs are the typical fantasy kings and queens armor. Sometimes you need a clown to cheer you up in all the killing. Plus a lot of characters don't really discuss the war, which was something that really depressed me about Fire Emblem Three Hopes. It's like they saw people love Three Houses and went, oh gee, what's the thing they love? War and multiple story routes. Yeah, the reason you probably won't see me do a video on that is because it's just so tiring when I streamed one route to only realize it was a bad ending for Golden Deer. Meaning each house has two routes and I would have to start over from the beginning and most of the supports were just so depressing like Hilda and Shares was honestly a snooze. So it was very refreshing to have this game be more lighthearted and a single story. Now to add to that, the game has recreation where at three spots you can force two characters to interact with each other to build a support. It's different to cooking because that involves you in a three-way with more clothing and food than you're probably used to. So here you can recreation by picking fruit, cleaning horses since they poop so much, and swimming. Gee, is that all it takes to talk to people? Swim awkwardly next to them? Also, characters will move around every time you load up the Somniel, and you can find them in amusing places like these two, who are made look like Gucci gang, just camping without a fire. They don't teach you how to do that in California. Your impersonations are brilliant. You really capture all the little details in a person's voice. Thanks for noticing. I do take requests, by the way, if you want to hear anyone in particular. So, like... Are we gonna hear the impersonations? That's the one thing I know about Zappy, is that she does good impersonations. You are incredibly observant. That must be why impersonating others comes so easily for you. <laughs> oh, stop. You're gonna make me blush. Takes one to notice one, though, doesn't it? Show them? Well... Don't turn around. And yeah, I still don't understand the three house emblem because I picked Aeroga to talk to here, but she talks to Claude again. So I guess it's all just set up in those bonds. She will always talk to Claude here. Oh yeah, and at bond 5 and 10, they get these two lines of dialogue with the other levels giving you skills to equip. Also in the field that they reach rank 5, they won't increase anymore unless you talk to them back at base. So we head to Brodia Castle where the Crown Prince Diamond greets us. I'm Diamant. Man, that's a cool design. And Orcris tells us about how Lucy will attack while the King Moron appears. M Morion, I'm sorry. I guess red hair only goes to the oldest child? You want our emblem ring, right? Uh. I knew you'd ask. 
That's why I brought it. Here! Gee, you sure you don't want a down payment or something? Well, let's summon the emblem. Who? It's kind of funny how all these characters are like, What? A person was inside the ring? I was just gonna sell it for gold or something. But the illusions appear with the crown princess, Ivy. I'm Goofy Goomba! I, Princess Ivy, speak for the illusion throne. I will now take your lives, your souls, and the rings. Those hand spikes have gotta be annoying, right? I mean, how would you even go to the toilet? I guess also it's a bad thing about me playing this game after six months is that the internet already spoiled me that Ivy's gonna join our team. She is one of the fan favorites. I wonder I why. Your big so she fights us for the rings. Amber? What are Illusion soldiers doing here? They've attacked us. Say, Amber, weren't you out fighting beasts? I was. But then Horsey got spooked and wouldn't listen to me. Holy moly, it's Shaggy! Like Scoob, I'm totally in a Fire Emblem game! Man, there's too many good designs now. So you gotta defend the force with this cannon which you can fire for big damage. But you know how Ken Selica is way too good together. And somehow, Ivy drops a ring before fleeing. Look, I don't know how loose these rings are. This stuff should be wedged on that finger tightly. Like how did the clown keep the ring but not her? Who? I am Leaf. Oh, it's that guy from Del Toro Quest. Here's my riddle and so beware. Man, I still don't know how one of my favorite book series had an anime. However, a general says King Hyacinth is invading from Elusia and is demanding to see Moron on the battlefield. Are you worried Brodia might lose this war? Or lose its king? <sighs> We're not ready for any of this. Man, that's the Brodia biggest death flag I have ever seen. If I die, I die. It is what it is. And he's like, okay, cool. When I return, I will fight you, Pepsi, for funsies. Also, make sure you turn into a dragon like your mother to make it extra fun. Oh, okay. Wait, I can turn into a dragon. Mother could. Can I? I mean, in the other game, you could. Man, I want a Fates remaster and this engine's so bad. So the entire royal family is leaving, handing the kingdom to this lady. What do you think? Is she capable of running a kingdom by herself? Yes. Well, support time to see how these new royals are. To find one, watch out! There's a wolf! What? Uh, where? Mr. Wolf, please go away. It isn't listening to me. No choice. I'll have to get serious. Mr. Wolf, I'm so, so sorry! The wolf is actually turning away. Incredible! Damn, this guy is great. And Etie and Yunaka's support has Etie being mad jealous Yunaka has muscles. Apparently! Huh? Sure, I'm ripped. Jeez. Yeah. Oh yeah, if you're having trouble on the supports on who to pick, there is also a recommended button, which will pick people to put together for the recreation. Presenting today's special! I want to order this every day! Hey, isn't that the Persona 5 jacket? Is that an alpaca? Yeah, I like this dude. Well, time for me to play this on the next day. And if you leave the game running, it plays a video showing all the characters. I do mean all the characters because, yep, Ivy is spoiled again. Also, a lot of converts to Pepsi for C rank. Well, it kind of felt weird since everyone views you as a god. So it's like, oh, Scoob, we're totally talking to a god right now. <laughs> You're so adorable when you sleep, Divine One. You're up rather late. Is something the matter? Oh, Prince Alchrist. It's nothing. My sleep was restless tonight, that's all. So you just woke up and got dressed in all that getup? This is a recurring dream, mind you. One that I have had many times since childhood. My brother used to be chronically ill, you see. Wait, Alfred was sick as a kid. Oh no! Such a good boy! Now I also unlock the Master and Second Seals. Master Seals are for changing into an advanced class for the characters, and Second Seals are if you want to change a character's class to a completely new type. So with Alfred, I wanted to change him to the Sword class to eventually make him a hero, because he's such a cool guy. And yeah, you now got more characters roaming around, you can just find them everywhere, even relaxing in the sun. And we unlock fishing! Yeah, it's not a JRPG unless you get to fish the fish. Unless you're Final Fantasy 16. Man, that game needed more fun side stuff. And you can click the card to see my review on that if you want. But here, it's not that difficult. Just press A on the right time and mash to pull back the fish. Ooh. Well, it's been a while since the DLC character, so let's get the next one. Hey, I know this one. 
Hey, isn't this like that Fire Emblem Fates map? Yep. So Veronica's ability is so hilarious as a rep from a mobile game because her special is to gacha roll for characters. So we pushed through and I will say this isn't my final team or anything. I'm still slowly working through the characters trying to see who would make the cut because I don't know a lot of their personalities. Except Alfred is guaranteed because he's the best. Well, let's do some supports to see the characters. Hey, Divine One. Good evening, Amber. Did you hear those weird sounds just now? Was that you? <laughs> sure was. I was calling out to my old alpaca friends back in my hometown. Say again? Are you challenging me? While Citrus here is very suspicious of Yunaka. If you have any criminal intentions, I will stop you. Man, I'm so excited oh, to learn about a backstory. I can and will act with a heart of cold steel. While Etia is pumping steroids into drinks to give the unsuspecting friends. It's all part of the job. Bottoms up. To strength. To strength. <laughs> well, what did you think? One thing's for sure. It's not fit for human consumption. Also, it's kind of funny in training how the game randomizes who you fight, because I don't think some of them want to be there. I'm Alfred, Crown Prince of Firene. I'm, uh, Jean. Should I really be here? <laughs> don't mess up. My fault! Whoa! Well, back to the story as we head into Elusia, where Diamond has Roy's ring, as the king says it's not fair for a king to wear a ring to the fight and gave it to his son. And we see the fight where the Illusion King Hyacinth didn't get the memo and uses his ring's emblem to shoot Moron. As they drag the king away, Hyacinth orders his daughter to distract us even if she should die. Man, it's really a cold king, huh? And in the cold, with so many corrupted, all hope lost, everyone despairing, there's so little light in this world right now. The snow's really swirling now. So these characters you see time to time in the game and they are optional to recruit, but you gotta make Pepsi talk to them in battle for her to join the team. You better believe I rushed over there as fast as I could. Also this map was funny because I put my two best units on the side in these towers, which heal you over time and just had them wipe out all the enemies that kept getting close. So we defeat Ivy's team. You've won. Please. Kill me later. Pepsi won't because she can't ignore good character design, except for those stupid hand spikes. And oh, she's like, But you are my deity, and I respect your will. Huh? Could I ask you to forget that? Father intends to perform a ritual that will restore the fell dragon's power. A ritual? Metal Gear. Oops, probably shouldn't have said that. So Somron needs a 12 rings to revive himself as a dragon. But for now, to semi-revive, he needs a royal blood sacrifice, so they will use King Moron for that. That is the extent of what I know. Come, Zelkov. Kagetsu. Let us leave this place. Wait, Ivy doesn't join? Huh, maybe all this fan art was wrong. But we find Vale, you know, the feet girl. Vail. Not really caring, it's minus 50 I out there. Were you wearing that ring before? Yes. It's very important to me. I didn't notice it the other day. It's pretty. Really. Pretty. Vale? Emblem ring. Vale. <gasps> oh, I'm sorry. I'd better be on my way. That was a little strange. Um, well, from Jade's support, she was a guard at a Brodia mining town and doesn't really like to impose. Pepsi, on the other hand, seeing a hot redhead, instantly imposes, saying, Oh, teehee, it's a scare we co-opted. Can you please save me? That was a strange example, but I'm glad you followed it. Sorry you had to watch me struggle like that. How <laughs> unflattering. Jesus, Pepsi, chill. Pepsi chilled now in the fridge section. I may not look at... But I'm an excellent cook. Just like prepping the alpaca's meals back home. God damn, he's so goofy. And as if perfect timing, Jade wakes me up on the first night. And Jade seems to be a comedy writer. Yeah, I know. Who writes novels based on real world things? I will this isn't funny enough to write about. You've been observing me quite a bit, Lady Edelgard. Is there something amiss? Apologies. 
Your careful and meticulous fighting style just reminded me of a sniper I once knew. Bernie? You know, this is where I would normally put a Bernie jump scare, but I think it's more scary if I just show this. As Sailor and Alfred fight. Your first impulse on hearing we were low on water was to dig a well. Oh, right. Some mix up, huh? Boy, was my face red. Would that it were the only example. What about the time you heard some soldiers wishing they could cleanse themselves? You immediately leapt to dig them a hot spring. Oh, come on. If the man wants to dig, let him dig. Oh, uh, do we not like hot springs? Well, on the world map, there are these skirmishes, essentially allowing you to randomly refight corrupted on old maps and a chance to get more money with silver and gold corrupted. By the way, I also learn if you want to get weapon proficiency, i.e. to learn how to use a different weapon if you want to change class, because I thought to change Jade into a mage. But I guess that's another reason you need bond fragments, because proficiency is based on their bond with other emblems, so you really got to use the fragments to boost these bonds. Also, Mikai's special ability is Great Sacrifice, which gives all your health but one and it's actually a crazy good way to level up. Well, you're still gonna be pretty vulnerable after that. And so, back to supports. Watch the Wrangling Master in action. Hey, Alpaca, slow it down, buddy. Whoa there, I said settle down. Ah! Ah! This scene is iconic to Jade's entire support line with every character. Which part are you on? Chapter 19 of The Adventures of Amber, The Deliberate Dummy. Yep, her best-selling novel is about Amber. Poor guy, I hope he gets some royalties. Also, Vander, my man! What are you trying to do? Poison people! How can you have an E-Rag food? It has a funny taste. <clears throat> my poison? We're done for. Morning. I have to say, you look so peaceful when you're sleeping. Bro, have you seen how Pepsi sleeps? 1990. Wait a minute. Maybe we need to clean the pool. Also, with these supports, I feel that they are a lot shorter than three houses, so much so that I feel that one entire dialogue is now split into three parts of the whole support line. I want to see these character notes, and I want to see them now. No. Yes. No. Why can't I see? Because. Like how Citrus and Yunaka talk, she's revealing her lore, and Citrus is like, wait, our dialogue count is up. Tell me it next time. So then, time for another DLC bracelet. Who's this Harry Potter looking nerd? Hi there. Hello there. Also, oh, wait a minute. Pepsi's outfit changed to a class. And this actually shows up in the parallel cutscenes? So you can have customization of the story. Then why not the support? I'm confused. Also, in this battle, the game is like, hey, uh, a lot of magic weirdo enemies have this animation of healing. So we're going to turn off that animation just for this fight, buddy. Uh, gee, thanks for all that. Happy for you, though. Oh, sorry it happened. And so I finally tried Veronica's emblem and did the gacha. Oh, boy. I can't wait for my gacha luck! Sorry to bother you first thing. But could you tell me what sort of breakfast you prefer? I will say it. Citrus, you really don't act like how you dress. I thought you would be like one of those. <laughs> yeah, that. Well, back to the story and the game warns you like, buddy, you got a lot of story ahead. Are you ready to proceed? Uh, hang on a sec. Gorgeous. What? So we see Clown get given an emblem ring by her dad, who's been acting very weird ever since Sombron got revived. While outside, Marth goes, oh no, I'm scared. Let's leave the king moron to his death. But Pepsi don't care and charges inside. Hyacinth is like, Damn, Ivy ain't here, guess you killed her. And we don't say a word correcting him. Oh, come on now, Hortensia will get mad and misunderstand thinking we killed her sister. You mean my sister is dead? And then she love anime misunderstandings. Oh, but hey, King Moron seems just fine. A little pale, bit, bit of bloodshot eyes, don't worry, the cops won't worry about that. But no, it seems Moron is dead and has been revived as a corrupted. You would have us leave our own father behind? I cannot. I will not abandon him here! Really paid the motion capture actors overtime for that, and so we have to fight. We have to let him die as the proud noble man he was. As the king of Brodia. I don't know if I can do this. And we burst through and killed the king. If some part of you is still in there, just... Thank you for everything. I love you. I always will. 
One from me! God damn it, Alfred, you ruined the mood! And move on to the other king who packs a punch. Once Lord Sombron drank his blood. Why is he telling no this to Anna? To and his emblem allows him to perform cloning jujitsu, but it's no match. However, the gremlin appears, saving him. Fell Dragon will be here in a moment. He can move once again? That means the sacrifice worked. <gasps> here he comes. And he's like, wow, cool, I'm back. Also, I'm hungry. Give me that royal blood. Which is so stupid because Hyacinth would fight for him. Why not eat like Alchrist or Diamond? You know, actual royals or the clown? Why would you eat the one guy who was helping you? He thinks his brain wasn't revived in this process. King Hyacinth! I thought he and the Fell Dragon were on the same side. Best boy knows what's up. And oh my god, it's you. Feet girl. Smelly. You had to go and ruin my fun. This is why I detest humans. Well, she seems uh, a little different. Okay, she's completely insane. I am Sombron's daughter, the Fell Princess. Oh my god. Someone slept with a snake man? But in comes. Well, well, well. If it isn't the divine dragon in their merry She's such a bad so Zephyr is a mage dragon and her gang, the Four Hounds, which is some guy who likes pain, some annoying girl, and a literal man with no anime traits. Pretty rare in a modern Fire Emblem game, to be honest. And so apparently, in this talking scene, Sassy Vale stole our time crystal, somehow, and somehow, used it to, somehow, seal the rings that are tightly worn on our finger. Somehow. Look, if I say somehow enough, it might make sense. Right where they belong. God, I love having a voiced main character. Byleth would have been like... Man, the cameraman is really to having too much fun at these cutscenes. And so Snake Man turns them into communists, making them so they can't talk, as Pepsi molds some more. Hey, we've still got emblem bracelets. Like, uh, Tiki. Oh, no, no, it's, it's, it's great to have... Uh, Tiki. But Pepsi seems really hurt that all the emblems are gone, leaving her all alone by herself. When I can't see them, I get very lonely. And in a cool map, we have to escape being chased by Corrupted, who get given the emblems by Veil. Hey, don't walk Ragnarok on me! However, all seems lost, but who should come to save us? Hello, Divine One. She has the time crystal and two rings they stole. One being... Who? And the other, yes, someone from a game I played! Marth? No, that can't be right. Of course you call her Marth. And these two are really good emblems. We've seen it. It's great if you have a lot of allies near the enemies. While Lin, oh, uh, we'll, we'll get to her. She's really broken. As Vale is mad, we escape. You shall all be destroyed. I will gut your allies, burn down my father's and crush the draconic time crystal. While Pepsi is mad we lost the rings, while Alcris is mad at Ivy for killing his dad, while Diamant is like, hey, come on, bro, she ain't that bad. I mean, have you seen her outfit? Really forgiving this guy. Time and again, you've shown true bravery. How the heck the do you know with all this, Lin? You weren't even there with us. And Lin is like, tee hee, we're not retreating, we're running away. So we run away back to the Somnial. Okay, look, I have to apologize. I'm sorry after 15 hours, there was an option to lower the music. I just didn't scroll down far it's enough. Stupid. So Ivy and her retainers join us. Kagetsu, who is literally from an eastern unnamed country, and Zelkov, who really feels like he was designed by Nomura. I was drafting requests for funding to send to Brodia's nobles. Wow, you can see every support, pixel in the sky. So now we unlock Tempest Trials, which are like waves of battles you fight with no healing in between to get some experience, and it was super tough. I won? I won! But I kind of didn't want to do it with how long it took for one match, and on the other hand, valuable experience. A fallen knight who couldn't protect anyone. I suppose it's funny. And I finally got Pepsi to level 10, which is all I needed to change it into. Drum roll, please. The Wolf Knight class. Yes, you ride a wolf into battle. It's so cool! And totally not for some other reason. <laughs> I'm pretty decent at impressions. Wanna hear me do the Divine Dragon? Sounds like a useful skill. You should save it for the battlefield. Why is this game doing this to me? Give me some impersonations, come on! Hey, wanna hear something funny? You. You're kidding. 
Well, we can finally see what Ivy's deal is. We'll talk when we're more comfortable. For now, I will leave you be and worship from afar. Worship? And talking to Zelkov, who is interesting. Your eyes are possessed. My brand. He's interesting and also that he seems to have a serial killer background, just like he notices with Yunaka. And we learn the full backstory of her, where she was raised by an assassin and forced to kill at a young age, but left all that behind. And I would take this seriously, if not for her original name being... She's called Laramar. Sounds like a pack of fake cigarettes. And since we have Lynn and Lucina, we can finally use their outfits, but like before, only the royals can wear it. Well, time for more DLC. And oh look, our outfit changed in the cutscenes. What a surprise. I sure didn't research this beforehand to make sure Pepsi looked good in all the cutscenes now. Seriously, why wasn't this a default hair option for her? And more seriously, we have a tail. I swear she's not a furry. Uh, so we summon the bracelet. Who? And on his map, we have to move through without getting poisoned before reaching Hector's chambers. Also, with Edelgard, I didn't realize that Flame Gambit actually sets fire to the whole floor. God damn it, Edelgard, why do you always do this? Ah, uh, then forget what you saw. Ah. Good match, Lin. Bro, I didn't use a Lin this map. Oh yeah, you know the wake up event thing? Yeah, it's completely randomized and each character has six unique ones depending on your supports with them. Yes, and there's no way to get the ones you want unless you try over and over again with this extremely long loading in between. Gee, gotcha rolls again, huh? Let's try someone more strict. <coughs> Divine one, you must wake at once. Oh, now you do an impression. Actually, it was very good. Please do some more. Fine, I might have pegged you wrong. It probably doesn't taste bad, Divine One. It tastes good. Also, now that we have a character that I actually know, I made sure to bond her with as many people as possible. Your novel was so funny, Jade. When the main character had to leave home, I was in stitches. That was supposed to be an emotional moment. You must have a, uh unique sense of humor. I can't get over what a privilege it is just to lay eyes on a legendary weapon like Falchion. Would you believe me if I told you its name actually used to be Pointy Demon Spanker? Yeah, I gotta review Awakening at some point. Pointy Demon Spanker! Well, now the goal is to head to Solm, the desert country in the bottom right, and ask nicely for their emblem rings. So, this is Solm. This it's very... Is sandy. But it turns out, these incredibly smart royalty who would one day take over their countries and a divine dragon, they get lost in the desert. I'll say it, we're lost. However, we find this guy who was a sentinel on patrol for Som named Fogato, as he asks us to help his retainers getting attacked by the corrupted. Hello, I'm the divine dragon. Nice to meet you. Oh, it's the divine dragon. The divine dragon? That hair. Like two scoops of sorbet swirling together in the desert heat. Well, at least someone likes my multicolored hair. Wait, now I can only pick seven people to use? Game, you're killing me. I can't pick a favorite team. And this app was kind of annoying with the sand pits that slow your movement when you go through them. And you gotta kill so many enemies. Hune here is a horse axe rider, while Pandreo is a priest. Oh, really? So he's probably got the best healing and staff usage. As we say the town's people, and I love how Zelkov and Ivy are just standing awkwardly in the shade. So Fogata takes us to her palace and is like, Mom! Visitor! Oh, wait, you're the crown prince? Yeah, I mean, that was kind of obvious. And meanwhile, we see these four bozos telling Vale their anime stereotypes, while Vale realizes she had too much American cheddar on her burger and orders Zephyr to take charge while she sleeps. Well, running back to the Somniel, which is funny to think that Fogato invited us in, but we are like, hang on, we gotta do some things back home. Well, and that Amber drinks grass. I donate buns to the Queendom of Som, which gives you more outfits to use. Anyway. Morning! This is my punishment for making Jade wear that, right? And it's also funny that we actually get supports with Fogato since he and his retainers technically have joined our teams. Nah, that wouldn't be me if it wasn't a rascal. Did they really just make Claude again? Wait, he's even an archer too. Oh, hang on, one thing missing. Now it's art. Well, we talked to Bunet, who is a chef who really likes food. Before allowing me to find inspiration in your tomato and blueberry eyes. No, you don't understand how much he likes tasting things. Did you need help with something? It's just that you look so appetizing. 
Excuse me? No, you don't understand. That armor of yours, may I have a lick? Wait a sec. His voice by Space Dandy. This game is just hitting me with my favorite dubbed anime voices. Now, I was getting a lot of characters and I really wanted their supports with each other for the funny banter. So I did some more skirmishes where I legit spent so long trying to optimize who stands next to each other to maximize support. But nothing. It's actually insanely difficult to get support in this game purely for the fact that you don't build any on the enemy's turn. Yeah, when they attack, your allies stop holding hands. Also, you know with Inaka how she's a killer, I, I mean Laramie, well she was only snooping around the Brodian royalty just because she wanted donations to help orphans, to not have to live like her horrid childhood. And I'll say it, Based. Well, I wanted to see more of Jade and Binet's support, so I had them eat a meal cooked by Lapis, who you think, oh, that's nice, she can cook nice. Oh my goodness! Hell the heck, gee! Oh, this is a sacrilege against the ingredients. Also, there's a new difficulty on the training. <laughs> Man, Zelkov is hilarious. Wow. This video is pretty big, huh? But you know what else is big? The news that for a limited time to the end of September, on my store you can get your very own Zappy sticker. Whoa, how marketable. Tell all your friends, tell that old guy on the street, get it now, limited time. It all helps support the channel. Also check back later in the year, I might add some more Fire Emblem designs later on. I didn't get time to finish them for the video, okay? Fine. Well, time to do another DLC bracelet, this time being... Hey. It's a Smash Bros guy. Your two emblems in the same bracelet? Right, but it's not that surprising. Robin and I are bound by ties stronger than fate. I swore an oath to Krom when we lost his older sister, the Exalt Emerin. Hey, spoilers. So yeah, you fight them on the Awakening map, which is really fun. Robin playing all these tricks on you to make you split up three ways to destroy these crystals in one turn. While his minions just summon meteors out of the sky. Now we can fight side by side again, like we did in Elise. Is that how you say it? I've been calling in Ulysses! Oh, why did nobody tell me? Yes, I'll do an awakening video at some point. Subscribe, okay? Fine! And here I was noticing a thing. Man, there's so many characters I want to do supports with, but I think with how the game is structured and how hard it is to get, I don't actually think I can do the supports on, like, my whole squad. I gotta be more picky and choosy with them. Train like I've never trained before! I'm gonna get the rock! <laughs> Amazing. Looks like your training is off to a rocky start. <laughs> Might I ask you for a quick lick? <laughs> All right, time to meet the Solemn Queen. I was just doing what any prince would do for his queen. That's mom to you. Remember when games had translations for us non-Americans? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Wait. Really? And they lost the ring. Oh. Uh, okay. Well, turns out the princess took it camping, as we see her with the retainers. Meet, meet, meet him. As they get attacked by the Fire Emblem Joe Bro twins, a staple in all Fire Emblem games, so we arrive and summon her ring emblem. Oh, it's that guy I, I made in Smash Bros. More? Those cheap cheek birds must have gone con for help. Fooey. You know you can so swear, say, buddy. As you command, my princess, we'll crush them with the hammer of justice. Tell Paddock all these characters I like. I can't use them all. Oh, jeez. So this map plays with the lighting again, where you cannot see in these dark spots, but also there's like junk in the way you gotta destroy. Marin here is also a wolf knight like us, and Penette is an axe user. Also, I noticed how each character wearing an emblem, well, they actually say some lines that the emblem character says. Like Etia says, I love you all, when giving the resurrection stone, but Jay doesn't say it. I'll be good. Much to my disappointment. But it's crazy that every character has lines from every single emblem, including all the DLC ones. Like, I am kind of okay with them not having voices in these post-game scenes now. Maybe if they said something of interest instead of just, I killed good, when you talk to them. Also, remember how I said Lin's abilities were broken? Well, here you go. Her special is a long-range multi-arrow hit, and her other move summons clones of her with one health. Sure, one health. But look at how they're using that health. No. 
So we easily kill the bandits and Tamara here tells us about a second ring when suddenly a second Hortensia has breached the palace. Well time for the post game. Wait, they have special dialogue related to the chapters? Since when? I legit thought they said the same battle quotes over and over. I didn't know you had to talk to them twice and every character has something unique for every map. Oh my god, I miss so much text. I'm so sorry, Engage. Well, annoyance at me aside, I adopted a camel. What? Also, I couldn't bear to change Marin's outfit. Look, she's wagging a tail. See, I love rare critters. And I especially love dragons. Oh no, she's a furry. Oh no. It's Velvet's voice too. This game is literally giving me back all my favorite voices. Sorry. What the heck are you talking about? Well, Tamara's support is that she's literally Chie 2.0 with the meat eating. I'm Solm! And I'm wearing lots Why of are we yelling? <laughs> Would you be offended if I took a little nibble from one of the pebbles? Dude, it is really Do you just. Want a little taste? Well, here. Well, the DLC emblems actually have level 20 being their cap, but the story ones with level 10, which you unlock later in the game. But I reached level 20 with Jade and Tiki, and realized the supports here actually have more than two lines of dialogue. Which means now I got another thing I gotta try with multiple characters. Also, when you do supports with the characters, you get a notebook that details what just happened, plus little extra tidbits about the character. Like Jade, she has the most lucid dreams of them all, and is 5 foot 5. Okay, just convert that to better measurements. What the hell? She's tiny! I am small. Well, time for the next DLC and oh god, it's Camilla. Actually, hang on. Lucina had special dialogue with Krom. Maybe I should wait for Corrin first before doing this? Or well, might as well farm support. And man, I don't know what I was doing wrong, but I did two maps back to back and didn't get a single support. Yeah, there's no way I can get them all by the end game. I really gotta decide and make a team and cut some people. Also, apparently I looked it up and the skirmishes scale with your strongest characters, which is dumb. Because usually this fight should be an easy way to farm for XP for weaker characters characters you have on the bench, or to raise supports of people that you don't really use. But these skirmishes were so tough, I always had to include Pepsi to make sure I didn't lose the match! Well, I masterclassed some people, and did some more supports where Yunaka is mad Meren monologues in battle, and so finally did a Cellcom support. I do not have fond feelings toward you, Princess Ivy. I don't like you either. And at this point, I was actually taking down notes on who I wanted to support with who. Because it's kind of hard to remember, oh, this C support is funny, I should see it to the end. At this point, I also asked on Twitter which support I had to see. And so many people told me about Gold Mary. Good to know it's obvious she joins the team, but... I'm ready to serve. <laughs> I challenge you. Face my iron wall. Will you go out with me? That's it, I'm never doing any of your supports. While Yunaka and Zelko bond over being ex-killers. And I have another peaceful sleep. <gasps> Wake up, Divine One! Who the hell woke me up? Oh, yeah, I can't stay mad at you. Morning! Is someone there? No one? Or a ghost? Please don't be a ghost, please don't be a ghost. <laughs> ah! There is nothing quite so isolating as pain. It cannot be explained. What the, the only are you talking about? Understand. Well, back to the castle. Finally! Took you long enough. Sorry, I was pairing your sister with funny characters. Oh yeah, your sister is alive. Right here, you know. Hey, you freaked out when we killed her and Pepsi pulled a bialith and kept the mouth shut? Look, she's alive from the dead! React or something! Strong Pepsi. Strong Pepsi. So Clown is like, give me the rigs or I'll kill the queen. Pepsi is like, do it. Bitch. <laughs> Oh, that was surprisingly easy. I'm afraid I have to cut the reunion short. No, cut me short. Zephyr then feeds the clown American cheddar cheese, causing her heart palpitations and turning her eyes red. Ronald McDonald would be so proud. And we fight them in the palace, which is a huge map, but I love when they make you split up the team, forcing you to multitask. Oh yeah, in the special animation with emblems, you get transported into the void. I challenge my fate. Yeah. Kill me! Not done yet! Mama! <laughs> By a bunch of weaklings! The floor's slippery! That's the only reason I lost! Well, we win, the hounds retreat, and the clown is freed from the mind control, joining us and giving the ring, which we summon, and it's Byleth. I am Emblem Byleth. 
It feels as though I've just awoken from a very long dream. I'm glad to be where I belong. At your side. Use my power to guide everyone. I will. Thank you, Emblem Byleth. And really doesn't speak much, huh? And so Tamara will now show us the Queendom's other ring. And man, I really love these flavor texts. Jade is like, whoa, watch out, the floor is slippery. Amber then falling straight on the floor afterwards is so great. Also, characters have special dialogue if you don't use them for a while, like with the twins here. They got annoyed, I forgot about them. Oh wow, yeah, I completely did forget about them. I actually was gonna use Vander too, but I kinda held off on him because he was so strong in the early game. Then just got overwhelmed with all these new characters I wanted to use, so yeah, I forgot got about him. As we see Vale staring at McDonald's in the desert for getting a PTSD heart attack seeing the McRib and saying she needs to sleep as this form is not good enough. As she sleeps, turning her eyes not communist and this Vale is like, whoa, Sand, where am I? Why does this keep happening to me? Sorry for waking you with my laughter. I slipped on a fruit peel earlier and hit the ground like a sack of hammers. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. No, don't die on me. I really have to play with the joy cords now, huh? Hi, Alfred. Ah. An enjoyable scene justifies itself without plot scaffolding. So what you're saying, Louis, is that these funny scenes in Fire Emblem help you look past all the plot inconsistencies. I see, I see. Ah. Well, it's finally time to see a Pandreo support. Yes, these supports just take that long, okay? Whatever, bud. If you get bored of not peeping, you're welcome to party hardy with me. Oh my god, he's just a frat boy. Let the two of us explore all the ways in which two men may grow ever closer. Just like the ancient What's Greeks, that? huh? It smells so fresh and so... green. Yeah, I love the smell of fresh cut grass. <laughs> oh, and turns out how, you know, I was waiting for Camilla and Corin. Well, yeah, because I talked to the Three Houses students so early on, now that I have Byleth, the game actually won't load the cutscene where he talks to them. Yeah, I guess you're meant to recruit all the main characters first before the DLC, so shame I'll never see that scene. Sass. You need to stop thinking of dying as a virtue, Marin. We're heading to the place for Psalm's second ring, and it turns out it's a ghost town. No, it's not what you think. I'm still waiting for more JRPGs to do the haunted section, like in the Zesteria house, or the FF7 remake train place, or replicate Emile's house. I absolutely love it when non-horror games have a spooky section. But what's scary in this? Well, this man is shirtless in a Nintendo game! Hurry! You must get to safety now! Hey, I know that voice. I take it you're a princess. Trapped in this unusual form by a wicked curse. Let me help. Actually, I'm... No need to persuade me, your highness. What are your cards saying to you? Le dragon. It means help may come from an unexpected source. Oh yeah, dragon, huh? How about that? So this map is fun in that the rooms only open once you reach the door. So you can't really plan ahead. Your goal is to reach the dancer Seedol who has the ring. And saying you're the divine dragon, he gives it to you to summon and it's... So this also has Miasma on the field, I can't believe I just chucked it there, which is dangerous but you can use any elements to remove it, like Edelgard's flames or now Corrin and Camilla's dragon veins, which summon elements onto the field. Oh yeah, Violet special is a dance which lets people around them get another turn. Huh, it's like I don't even need this dancer guy, because yeah there's actually no dancer class, it's just this one guy, and I'm sorry my team is very full right now. Will we make it to the exit but fail appears, however we don't know it's the good bail. Whatever game you're playing, stop it. Stop it! Huh? You mad? Don't act like you forgot. I can see through your lies now. Come on, look at the eyes! You should know how important they are. As everyone gangs up on Vale, saying how she killed all these people, and she's like... <laughs> and runs off. Also... What the sweet hell? She's Ringo's voice! <laughs> I don't think hair works like that. I killed rings? Stole people. As Grease comes in is like, oh, you're the other veil. She goes, I spoke with Pepsi. She said I killed people. Grease goes, nah, they are lying. Hey, you want to meet them again, right? I'll take you to them. And this idiot believes in a character designed like this. D D Divine one. I only meant to say a prayer. Pendrail, you party loving fool. Oh yeah, Pandreo is a priest who worships us, but also hosts the most frat boy type of parties. It's an insane combination. I love it. I am Emblem Corin. I'll fight with all I have. Or how about... I am Ivy, Crown Princess of Elusia. Finally! Only took like 30 hours. I know it's not much, but 
would you like to go on a jog with me? Oh, take it, Jade. If she asks you to jog, it's like you're a best friend now. And since I got my favorite emblem, time to see what bonds they had with the characters. You've got a big family, right? What's it like having older siblings or a younger brother? The older siblings were steadfast, while my younger brothers were arrogant, but still cute. My home was a quiet alpaca ranch surrounded by cliffs. What was your home like, Corin? I had two homes, one covered in darkness, the other bathed in light. Wait, what's an alpaca? Actually, there's a good reason to bond Corrin with everyone, because one of her skills actually boosts supports with allies while also healing them. Yeah, if you do an action with this standing next to an ally that doesn't have full health, you heal and get support with them. So giving everyone this ability helps speed up the support. Also, with the training, I was still I using Jade as a mage. Face my iron wall. Hi! And I purchased more Amiibo stuff, which was weird. You get music from the older games, but I found out that you don't really get to use them. Like, you can listen to the music in your bed, but you can't change the Somnial's background music, making it kind of pointless. I think you can change the battle music, but to be honest, the game has pretty average overworld music. On the other hand, I have never seen a game have every single battle song be absolutely amazing. No, these are just that good. Why would I want to change them? With every chapter having a new song and it's always so amazing, also doing that thing where they have a normal slow song that picks up the pace when you transition into a fight. Also, some songs sound like they fit in with Final Fantasy XIII 2 and Fire Emblem Fates. Gee, I wonder why I like the song so much, huh? Well, with the dancer, he actually adds a new mechanic in that you got a fortune teller. Only at night, which tells you who you should support with. And frankly, it sucked. I never understood it. And the characters it says I think you should talk to right away to get a new support cutscene are never the supports I care about. But sometimes the current worry is pretty amusing. So time for Camilla since we have Corin. Oh, I can't wait to hear her sultry voice. I am Camilla. Princess of Nor. Oh, come on! They anime fight her! What happened to one of the most unique voices in the entire franchise? I don't know what I'd do without you. I am Camilla. Well, I guess I'm not gonna enjoy her dialogue. But here it's a map where you fight her in the sewers from the game. With a really cool remix of the song. It actually uses a lot of the other tracks in this one. And it was a cool map splitting up the team. With Camilla using dragon veins to destroy the map randomly. But maybe they should think differently about the, uh, Unity lighting <laughs> engine. Like. Holy fish pain! How shall we celebrate? Perhaps a dip in the hot springs? Well, at least the writing is consistent. Good morning. Who the heck are you? Man, I've seriously forgotten so many of the early cast that never made it onto the team. My mother hated all of father's other women. Your mother especially. Wait, the Illusion King had multiple wives? Ah, that sure sounds like Fire Emblem Fates. So now you have these paralogues related to the main emblems, which unlock their bond caps from 10 to 20, and they are based on important maps from their main games, like with Lucina here. Also, it was very odd. I'm not sure if anyone else can tell me this, but at some point I kept focusing on Jade to get a lot of experience. Her level wasn't as high since I swapped her base class. It resets everything to level one. But man, did she not get as much experience compared to the other characters fighting the same enemies? I couldn't tell if this was like a skill she had or something. Also, you know my no ghost spooky section complain in JRPGs? Well, Ivy at least has my back. I am shaking because I am afraid. You, spooky ghost, how's it going? <gasps> Quiet! <laughs> sorry, sorry. But singing might make you feel a little less scared. Why not try it? <sighs> ghost! <laughs> God, Tamara is so adorably goofy. The singing, though, is bordering on adorable and cringe. So time for Violet's Paralogue, which is in that very iconic place. Some say a greenhead priest was last seen twerking here. But you got the same sort of thing where if you stop his minions attacking the crystals, you get more rewards at the end. Also, I didn't know that if you use two characters with emblems from the same game next to each other, you get a random line. Hi. Soren. Well, I didn't even know Soren was from my ex game. And after all this grinding, I finally made Jade reach a level 20, meaning she could go to the advanced class, being the sage. Huh? While Alfred got to live out the dream of being Cloud, and Ivy finally begins to open up to us. I love you. I love you, Pepsi. So yeah, despite being an illusion, she actually worships the divine dragon and is kind of fangirling that we are just right here. Oh, uh, okay. While Merin and Laramie continue their little spat with Laramie tempting Merin with dragon action figures to stop the monologuing. It doesn't work. 
And wow, I'm having so much fun. Oh crap, I just realized. We're at chapter 16. Meaning, I should probably do that DLC. You know, the failed Xenolog thing. We should access by talking to the magic well in the Somnia. Yeah. Well. So it's time for the DLC. Will this be as enjoyable as the last two times? Where I actually have enjoyed DLC in this franchise? Will it continue that streak? No. So to start, Pepsi gets transported to another world. Where this world's Pepsi is dead. Has a single hair color and wants us to save the world for him. After all these long years, at last our savior has come. So these are fell dragons Nil and Nell. Seriously, what's with the twins' names in these games? So the basic gist is that here, Somron used the emblem bracelets, you know, the DLC ones, and fought in a war a thousand years ago against the Divine Dragon. Lumera sacrificed herself to imprison Somron, while Pepsi restored the land. However, Somron was down and busy, and had many children, all of whom are twins. Most died as they would kill each other, which was weeding out the weak. However, Nell and Nil were loving towards each other, with Nil not being able to turn into a dragon. However, Somron returned, and Pepsi and he both died at the same time time in the fight, so now with no dragons in the world, the countries began to fight with all the leaders dying as the world rotted. So now for some reason the twins are helping the divine dragon and pray to revive Pepsi, to help reclaim the bracelets, getting surprised that we instead appear, and they want us to get the bracelets that are being held by the nations while stopping a force that is aiming to finish Somron's plans. Nell kinda hates our guts for some reason, has corrupted attack the base, and we get to use characters from our main game at a set level so there's no experience or anything. Thing, which also meant Jade was back to a default class again. And the enemies! Ooh. <laughs> I know. Nell here can change into a dragon, and Nil kinda sucked. Really badly. Like you actually shouldn't use him. He will probably die swinging a sword. Well, we defeat them and recover the bracelets, and we try to summon them, but Tiki here is still a communist, and Pepsi can't bless the emblem. But we can lock them up so that they can't be used for evil, which is just as good. Since only fell dragons can awake them like this, you know, red, another fell dragon, one of their siblings, must be the evil mastermind. So now we must head to the countries to grab the emblems before the evil. And it's amusing that this world is flipped with all the countries swapped horror. Horizontally. And since the kings and queens are dead, who shall remain? The kids. Yep, Alfred is the king. No, what did they do to you? And they made Celine such an evil lady. Still, Alfred? Still undecided about whether to invade? Lady However, we Nell, meet. Lord Nell, hello, hello. Celestia, we were just talking about you. Huh? I've been eagerly awaiting your arrival. You must be so tired after that long trek. Who is this world Zephyr but not evil? She's actually good. Really? She's a friend? Arbuckle, why do you punish yourself this way? You'll never meet a woman like that. Who could that be at this hour? Hello, hello. Uh, excuse me for one moment, please. Yes, yes, yes! Oh, thank you. Yes, 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 yes! <laughs> Won't you come in, please? So we head to Furnang and front the siblings for the bracelet. Imposters. And so we fight, which was very amusing because I was using Alfred to fight himself. And more amusing is that I can still use the emblems I have, meaning I had Veronica, who summoned Lynn, and she's absolutely broken because by herself, she summoned her own clones, meaning we could potentially have five Lins on the map. So we win, take and seal Hector away, and move on to the next country. And I will say, I'm kind of gliding over the story because I kind of wasn't enjoying this DLC. Like the gameplay is good, with all these new maps, but the characters, you know, are evil, but they're still good in my world. I don't really like stories where you travel to alternate timelines and it's a different version of the character when you still have that same character alive and well. You know, they should be dead or something. <laughs> like if it was to say the current will change and you lost all the old characters, sure. But I mean, I got to use my goodest boy Alfred against this evil one. So it's kind of hard to care about this Alfred when you know he's not your one. You have another ready and alive and good. And you can tell I was wasn't enjoying this because I turned off the auto text and turned on my speed reading mode because I could tell there was going to be no funny dialogue to record for the video. Did something? We don't listen to imposters. And man is way more serious. Did they hear how people wanted a serious tone from Three Houses back and made the DLC like this? Because I was actually enjoying Engage being more light-hearted. You know, it was a nice change of pace. Anyway, we had to Brodia and meet. Gregory, who is Gris for good and part of the Four Winds, but not the Four Hounds. However, they are under attack, so run away.
as we made the Brodian royalty. Now finish them off. Or must I do everything for you, my pathetic excuse for a brother? Why are the younger ones so evil? And yeah, another reason is that these voices, they can't do the evil that well. I mean, they probably didn't sign up for this with their character. And speaking of, oh, no. Nell and Nil doing you the child strong. voices. Surely you will be able to transform eventually. <laughs> when? Yeah, nah, yeah, nah, yeah, nah. And so we fight them for their bracelets on a linear map with a new class of enemy using magical cannons to shoot at long range. And also I found it annoying that since you don't get any experience, when a character kills, they still get the animation of getting experience, which you can't skip, so it's just I'm like... I'm glad this battle is won. Also then I thought we weren't getting any experience, but here you go. Andrea randomly got some here. And so I'm chugging along, not really vibing with the DLC. We seal the bracelet and leave. But then... I have no further use for you. What the hell? Now it's getting good! And now in Elusia we meet Madeline and Morvier who tells us that Elusia has begun to revive Sombron. But at the same time, Solm is invading them, leading to a fight where we got to avoid the two countries fighting each other and defeat both leaders. Funnily enough, I used my own Tamara to defeat Ivy. They refuse to concede defeat and Nell is like, close your eyes transforms into a dragon and kills them both. She reveals that they were corrupted like King Moron, where they aren't themselves and have been long dead. And also that she used to love the old Pepsi. You know, classic Pepsi. <laughs> so then runs off, leaving us and Nil alone. Who then? How will she handle losing the one she cares for most a second time? Huh? I really must find out. I hope that is all right with you. What are you talking about? Look behind you, Divine One. What the heck? These kids are crazy! Maybe trusting fell dragons who are literally snakes was a bad idea, perhaps? So when the group returns, Nil says that we stole the bracelet and ran off, but he's tracked us into this temple in Solm. And here- I am no powerless failure. I will fulfill the late Lord Sombron's ambitions. So he's trapped Pepsi and tries to get us to join, but we refuse. So then he goes about to break our spirit while fighting off with Nell. And now we and the Four Winds have to free them in probably my favorite map in the entire game. Yeah, no kidding. We gotta constantly heal and pray he doesn't kill Pepsi, who has no weapons, while Nell doesn't die alone and moves slowly towards them. I kinda stuffed up a bit here as well because I almost cheesed it by making Nell run to the right and was hoping I could trap Nell by standing on the healing tile while he couldn't, but the guy just snuck around the side. Wait a sec. So the reason you were sucky in the first fight was because you actually were trying to sabotage us? That's actually insane gameplay adding to the writing, wow. Well, in the story, Nil drags Nell away, while the Four Winds, overwhelmed by the Corrupted, sacrifice themselves, crushing the temple. And so on the final map, we reach the Somniel, where Nil has the final bracelet. But it has a barrier made by the previous Pepsi, and he needs us to break it, so he uses Nell as leverage. And we break the barrier, and Nil gets the seven bracelets to turn into a giant dragon, and aims to rule the world, you know, typical villain stuff. However, Somehow, Celestia, Gregory, and Madeline arrive, saved by Morvier who used a warp staff to warp them out before he died. Okay. And this map is actually really cool where he only appears on these circles and will do a huge telegraph attack. And your goal is to move and destroy the corrupted royals, who are somehow alive again, to weaken the barrier on Nil. And after a while, Nil will destroy the islands he's standing on, which is hilarious that he just kills his own Tavera. I feel the desert sun on my face. And this map was actually so challenging because he couldn't just rush off alone. But we win and Nil says that he's not Nil, but another child who replaced the real Nil as a kid. So, okay. I'm having trouble believing all of this. Believe it. And instead of killing him, Nil kills us. Brother. <laughs> Saying she always knew but loved him as much as her brother and asked for his real name before she dies. He says his name My is Rafal. Name is Rafal. Rafal. Metal Gear. And Pepsi says how Lumero used a life force for a thousand years to revive us, so maybe you can do it here. Rafal says, okay, when I revive Nell, I'll come over and join you in your world. Wait, really? You're joining us in the main game? And the three wins are joining? Celestia joins our team! Well, <laughs> As another pop song plays while the DLC ends, and immediately, it's like, hey, it's been a thousand years in our world, we bought dip. So yeah, five new people on the team and two new classes. Oh my god, they have supports too, it never ends! But now with so many people, I actually could not find Celestia in the Somnio. Yeah, if you sleep, it resets which characters are wandering around, since it can't load them in all at once. 
And I kid you not, for one and a half hours, she did not appear in my somnial. Have you On eaten patrol? How do you Doing do? well today? I got that at least. She's fast asleep. Secret snack, activate! Stop right there. But you still get Celestia support, and she's honestly more Camilla than Camilla in this game. Which is a very good thing, okay? Say ah. Uh, uh, come on now. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Also, doing the supports gives you notes on them, which shows you 3D model poses for the characters. And that's why I did it, okay? Get me pictures of Celestia! Nice! Well, okay, while well, I wait for my Celestia to appear, let's get back to the main story. And if you ever were asking the question, who are my favorite emblems in this game? Lynn, Lucina, Ike, Violet, and now Corn. As we see the four hounds. See, this is why I can't stand you. You never praise me, and you're no fun at all. Man, they are so annoying. Well, they learn that Gold Mary and Rosada, you know, the clown's retainers, deserted, stealing a ring, and so they chase them, where the retainers meet us, and after some convincing, join our team as we summon the emblem. Who? And this map was cool with the water changes tired, ruining your movement speed randomly. But as we get to the end, we fight Marnie and Morvier, and kind of sad there's no unique dialogue for Celestia with Marnie. You would think they would at least mention why they are fighting this clone of their boss. So they flee and head to Firine, where we think Fail is, but also in this post game, Celestia actually has unique dialogue, which is great. You probably should ignore that. And so we get Colmery! What the heck? As we see the good Vale be like, Oh, thank you for helping me. Also, Lucky, I have this dragon stone my sister gave me. I know she's alive somewhere. And Zephyr's like, WTF, there's another kid alive somewhere? That's bad news for us. Well, time for Gold Mary's support, which I heard were the best in the game. Has your lunch with me today brought you any feelings You're of contentment? Dick. What's the matter? Why are you taking your clothes off? You're all sick! And Rosada's support with Jade is gonna teach her cuteness. I've never tried to be cute before. Also, Rosada is pretty funny. Also, what the hell? In 40 hours, I think this is the first time I got the thumbnail in the daytime. Man, my luck in this RNG has been so random. Meanwhile, Bunei ruins Pandrea's party, and to fix it, I must attend a party. What? While we get possibly the best support in the entire game. Oh, I'm gonna step in here. Excuse me. Did you just? That big potato was mine. Then you should have taken it instead of staring at it. Ugh. This is just the kind of thing I'd expect an illusion to do. Only when there are Firinis in the way. I don't think you want to push this with me, lady. Hand over the baked potato. Respectfully, I decline. You decline? That's a fine thing to say for a potato thief! I can't steal what wasn't yours to begin with. Any authority figure would agree. That's it. No more talk! Give me that potato! No. You can't just eat it. Delicious. Mm. Sorry, I got distracted for a moment there. What were you saying? Ugh. Okay, Have fine. I see why you all love her. Over. I guess Etia really loves okay. potatoes then. It's pretty neat, in fact. Also, one horrible thing is that the amiibo only give you outfits depending on the ones you have. Meaning, no matter how much more times I scan the 5 FE amiibo I have, I could not get more tickets. Meaning, I couldn't get Erica's outfit. And that's probably the best one, which is so stupid they are locked to the amiibos. Who even buys these now? It's pretty neat, in fact. So rushing to Firine, we find the port on fire. And Vale is there like, What the heck? Why did you do this, Zephyr? And she's like, What do you mean? You gave the order, sweetie. So Zephyr reveals how Vale wasn't the child Sombron wanted, never turning into a dragon and always wishing for world peace. So Zephyr was tasked with using a spell to make Vale's dragon urges, hence a split personality as evil Vale wakes up. You're not Vale. Give her back. Rest assured that I am Vale. Yes. In fact, I am Vale in her truest form. Only one of us deserves the honor of calling the great Bell Dragon her father. That honor belongs to me and me alone. My friends, it's time to fight! And so we're gonna maneuver through the fire and burning people, the corrupted being the villagers or revived the zombies, as Vale revived King Hyacinth, who acts like those DLC people, not like King Moron, but more like himself. But just 
or evil, I guess. The not really zombie-like. Also a new mechanic is that when you crack the revive crystal on the bosses, now their emblem unleashes, which is more likely they will use their abilities. So it's best to try and get both health bars down in one turn. Also, Zephyr fighting Zelestia. Is that the me of this world? You have my face? I don't know what manner of illusion that is, but I dislike it. Away with you! Such incredible power. Wow, okay, they actually have dialogue for her. That's pretty cool. And they all flee. Good Veil secretly takes over, asks for a ring, and somehow throws it over the side and it magically returns to us while yelling like in those anime endings. Still. Must yeah, I'm sorry, Veil, I can't I hear a word you to you're saying. That. Zephyr gets mad and high fives her. As we have more fun times in the Somniel. You look upset. If my novels aren't your style, you can tell me. I won't take it hard. No, no. Seeing you reminds me how funny they are. <laughs> then now I can't stop laughing. That's the cutest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I've noticed that you often wear the same expression, even in battle. I've been told people have a hard time reading my emotions. Wow, they acknowledge Byleth as a sure deadpan main character. That. While Lucina also competes against Corrin as the best Bond character. Hey Lucina, get a load of these new clothes! Isn't this the best getup ever? The alpaca cross-stitched into the center is so large. I love it. Your fashion is truly inspiring. And Tamara and Jade go into her old mining town to find some jewels because Tamara wants Jade to wear some and pretty herself up. But Jade! You said you wanted to find jewels for yourself, but now you're focused on finding one for me. I'm just taking a moment to enjoy the feeling. God damn it, my heart! Oh no! It's the big ribs again! So time for Corrin's paralogue where it's that iconic map where she had to make a choice. I had three options that day. Or four choices. And it's an okay map, I guess. She can change the environment. But it was so nice to run around it in 3D. I really need that Fates remaster. Also, despite being... Uh, British. Tiki is actually pretty fun. Gameplay, I mean, she gives you a free revive. And Bond... Yes. I love seeing people smile. And you'll have to teach me how to make that odd sound. Also, Marin here. I swear I can hear the voice actress laugh at the end. Ring. It's going to blow your mind. And don't mind me, just changing my profile card. So Zephyr asks Omron, did he have more kids that aren't dead? There is something else I would like to discuss. <sighs> ah. Well, you were there a thousand years ago, and if you didn't see the kids' bodies, since they all should be dead, then they must be alive. So you better find that kid now, or else. While we head to Illusia to fight them, I get interrupted by ships, and yes, more ship battles, just like the greatest one. And there's this old man on the ship. I suppose I should, yet I find myself reluctant to spill blood. And so he joins us. Target sighted, attack! What the hell is nuts? Now the emblems all huddle together like, okay, we can do this secret miracle thing every thousand years, but when should we do it? Oh, the player's listening? Okay, let's get quiet. Alright, fine. Then tell me your day of six mark and a plan. Well, time to see what this Linden guy is all about. I was just baking some pastries with thunder magic. I prefer them to be a bit thunder cooked. Oh boy. Are you ready to begin, Divine One? I think so, Linden. But I do want to double check Why is one that last evil thing. music? The first step is to cast thunder on you a few times to see how your body reacts. You'll grow numb to the pain soon enough, but your hair may not survive the experience. No, not my hair! Man, this linen guy sure sorry, is something! What's wrong? Talk to me. I'm here to help. <laughs> it's just that... I can't possibly be any more charming! Uh, what? Also, Amber has really good supports of people. Well, first off, alpacas are super fluffy, but also, they're really cute. There is a lot of spitting, though. You have to watch out for that. Spitting? Magnificent! I'm sure I wouldn't mind alpaca spit one bit. And here I kind of had a good idea what my team was, as I actually wrote down who had supports with who, and then made sure everyone was holding hands with someone they would get supports with in the battles, and this cannot fail! They didn't get any supports! While Bunei and Pentreo hey, enjoy their party. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Anything at all. Well, there is one thing you can do. 
Let me give you one little lick. One little what? Oh, it's a wonderful day for laundry. Man, they're finally paying out with the impressions. And Goldmary actually helps out Yunaka since she had trauma while doing laundry from her childhood. Probably didn't put the spin cycle. So it says to imitate her to pretend you're someone else. I'm sorry if my perfection is too much for you. To be said coyly in response to praise. You're a little too quick a study. You don't have to imitate everything I say. <laughs> Only kidding. Also a question, every time I went to the pool, the characters see either lying on the chairs or splash over here. But every single time, I only got the twins and Tamara splashing. Do other characters do it? Because in my whole playthrough, I never saw anyone else here. You look like you're having fun. As always. Also, what do the overlaid voices at once? It's like the game notices your AFK and spams everyone's voices in the vicinity to jump scare you. At least do it like this, you, aren't you know. Not here while you do something else, are you? While Rosada teaches Jade how to be cute. Shucks, a doodles. I'm Jimmy Jammy Jade. How cute. Now I have to go back to how saying you get Pepsi supports with the characters. Because it actually is really hard since you don't get to do recreation with them. The best way then is to give the spirit gems you picked up in the Somniel. Thank you. Thank you. As you can see, it's still not the best. Oh yeah, remember how I said characters have unique lines when they use an emblem? And Marin says she loves dragons? I am currently a dragon! How cute! Might I ask you for a quick lick? Speaking of which, Bunei, you're looking pretty beefy. Beefy, you say? Do you mean you would like to have a quick lick yourself? Uh, no, I'm good. I was just paying you a compliment. Alfred is still the best. He doesn't even care Laramie won't tell him about her past. Just so trusting of everyone. Such a good boy. Oh yeah, what about that best support with Etier fighting Goldmary for the potato? I'm sure they're probably killing each other right now. Oh, I can't wait. Whoa, is your skin seriously this smooth? Uh, maybe I'll come back later. Gonna need a bigger bell. Oh, too loud, too loud! Also, oh, don't think the well is over, as you can discard items into it. For the next day, it's a spit out, a croissant bow. <laughs> oh my god, these weapons are great. And that's the end of my song, alright! Haha, <laughs> good one! God damn it, Alfred is so nice, he can't even tell her his thoughts on her singing. Wait, no. No, he probably actually really likes it. And of course, Celestia makes the best food. What did you expect? And while Pandreo is still the party guy, he's still the church guy. And he'll pray for Louis's mother's soul, which is so sweet. God, why are so many characters in this game amazing? Now, while all this fluff is happening, Zephyr creates a helmet that can permanently make Vale into a communist, which is no good for old red, white, and blue Pepsi. She sends Marnie and Morvia out to meet us at the port in Illusia. Morvia is like, okay, don't put the helmet on Vale till we get back. As we arrive in the port called Give Report. Oh, uh, give report. Nothing to report. But it seems we are too late with the corrupted already. All the humans dead. While Morvi and Marnie are taunting us. And there is so much my asthma. But we aren't alone because... Her! Remember that old lady from Brodia? Yeah, I'm actually shocked. Another character we can recruit. Also, I love how troll this map is because you got the villager spots. But usually the villagers give you items for saving them. It's a Fire Emblem staple. But remember, everyone is dead here. I don't fall for it again! Well, we grab the rings from the two, who actually stole them from Zephyr, in a feeble ploy to use them to try and win more back from us, but the gamble failed. However, Morvia is a bit more open telling us what Zephyr is planning to do to Vale. Seems that Morvia cares about the OG Vale, and now we have Micaiah and Roy back. So, back to the Somniel! I'm curious, which parts made you laugh? Oh, I laughed at so many parts! <laughs> there was that one scene! And that other one! <laughs> and the ending! Oh, this! This is beautiful! I've seen her seriously amazing in this game. <laughs> it's a giant bug! I, I don't know what to do! Oh, now calm yourself, Lucina. I shall drive it away for you. Now, I was wondering. I used Panette for this Bond's support. You know, the skull face girl who I gave a skull mask because she reminds me of skulls. War happened. Oh, man, I don't know. I really liked her voice. She legit sounds like young Sheldon. 
Teacher, teacher. It is actually a hilarious show. I don't know why people hate it so much. Maybe it's because they never watched Big Bang Theory. Bazinga. How much longer do I gotta do this kneeling crap? Uh uh uh. Language. Try again. Damn, so it is a swear word. Man, I already have my team pretty much set out. I picked my favorite. And just because of this Lucina bond, I. I. I think I want to see all the Penet support. And the first one being with Amber. Where Amber has a thing for legends and mysteries, Penet loves ghosts. So they go ghost hunting together. We've arrived at the mansion. Ah, oh, I'm trembling. My heart is pounding. I've got goosebumps. It is here, as in there. Look. Do what now? Whoa. Whoa. Man, I knew he sounded like Shaggy. Penet's backstory is actually really deep as she ran away from home due to terrible parents and was fending for herself before being taken in by Tamara and decided to try and be more ladylike, hence her amazing fake accent. While Tamara wakes us up and oh. sets fire to the oh, bed. No. This fire is huge! As Nell and Celestia still have supports with each other. Then I bid you farewell. <laughs> I then find out oh, Marin and Mary. Chloe are really well, good hello, friends. Boy. You're looking beautiful as always. You know, I saw these blossoms and immediately thought of you. One they seem to be very good friends. friends. And so after more battles, I get more pet supports, which honestly have been my favorite in the entire game. You here? You can drop the silver spoon act around your own brother. <sighs> Fine. Why are you working for the church? What the heck, he has a sister, and they have a really unique backstory about how he took over the parents' church after they disappeared while she ran away from home? Lucida, thank you for helping me find this! Also, it's hilarious how half of Laramie's supports are her. Zappy morning, Panette! Getting found out she's a killer, because half of this cast also have scary backstories. You carry yourself like a noblewoman, but you are not one. I smell a fake. Why, that is ludicrous. Slanderous, even. The princess's singing advice proved a bit, uh, challenging. Indeed. Marin, take all that oomph and hold it right under your belly button. Mystifying. What is oomph and how does one hold it? I'll tell you what oomph is. So, back to the story, Zephyr is mad that the two lost the rings and tells them she already put the helmet on Veil vale as she punishes the two. Yeah, I'm glad we got the better Zephyr. So we enter the castle and find only Gris is there with Selica, taunting us to fight him. We'll make you give back that ring. Now you're talking. Make me, dragon. Tear me limb from limb from limb. And this map was so cool, more dark areas. But since he was using Warp Ragnarok, he keeps teleporting to hit and run attack us. But we win, finally getting our warp back. <laughs> 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 you think you're a divine dragon? Let me set you straight. You are the child of the fell dragon! Oh, what the heck? He says he figured it out because the divine dragons, when they summon emblems, they pray. The fell dragons say invocations, and we have been summoning emblems the whole time by saying a lot of things. So Pepsi goes into a spiral. The night mother died, I had a nightmare where I was surrounded by flames. My hair and eyes were red. Hey, how do you even know your own dream's eye colors? Sigurd confirms this by saying Lumera wanted to save us, but yes, we are Sombron's kid. Which also means since we don't have any divine dragon powers, we can't stop Sombron, so GG. But Sigurd is like, you dummy. All the fell dragon summons are communist. You make us true blue. So you have both divine and fell powers. Hence the funny color combination. See, there is a lore reason for a goofy ass design. So thankfully the game doesn't dwell on this scene. I would have hated to see a whole chapter of Pepsi spiraling. And everyone supports her as we try to find Vale but don't know where she is. Also, that means we are the sister she was looking for. Morvier though says she's in Lethos and he will take us there. Sure, okay. But we pause for more Sawmill time. My Panette and Laramie bond over their childhood. One more step and we'll turn your intestines into outestines. Got it? We're not here to kill anyone. But if you're here to be killed, well, my hands are tied. What is this zappy business all about? Oh, well, uh... It's the marketable merchandise you can buy right now! So you and your siblings fought, did you? 
My elder brother and I have also slugged it out. Slugged it out? Oh, yes. I've done far worse than that to them. <laughs> And I do one skirmish reminder, the levels are scaling, and I decided to not use Pepsi, making this such an insane fight, down to my last two people to win! While we see more <laughs> of Nell and Celestia. You are crying. I'm so sorry. I tried to make friends, but I was unsuccessful. As Amber this time wakes us up. How about a soft breeze blowing past your face? <gasps> I can't take it. This guy is so goofy. Hi. Oh my god, I didn't think there'd be a weirder goth girl at this party. And yeah, I'm kind of holding off on the story because I need to speed run these penet supports before I end the game. Here, go ahead and feel my abs. <sighs> if you insist. Wait a second. Planet's voice is Clementine! This game is seriously a nostalgia voice acting trip for me, what the hell? But it ain't all fun in the Somnio. <laughs> And Pinhead's support with Andrea is adorable in that she comes to accept her parents and goes to his church to pray for them. While she on the other hand with Ivy. He hangs by one last thread of decorum. The pride I take in my royal office. That thread is about to snap. Yes, it will snap any moment now. Even a princess is only human after all. So, with that, I'm getting out of here! Good heavens! I swear, a non-horror game instantly loses 10 points if they don't have spooky scenes for me. I love this so much. While well, Goldmarie is forced to teach Panette how to cook. It's absolutely raw. So back to the story. On the ship, Morbius says Omron's plan is to restore Gradlon, the super evil land from thousand years ago. It's held underwater by a divine shard in Lethos, which is probably why he's going there. And from that, Somron's goal is to invade other worlds. How is that even possible? Pepsi, where do you think those emblem rings came from? And why Vale was called a defect is that when Somron awoke, he realized Vale was his only surviving child who never did any fighting. She was just hiding in a temple of worshippers of the fell dragon, one being Morbier. Sombron though needed a child to obey, so Zephyr forced her to be evil, and I couldn't believe it. The game is like, wow, Marnie is sad. As she goes, that beats my sad childhood. What's that? You want to know my sad childhood? No? I was just abandoned by my mom, that's all. I had a lot. We the superiors lot of are those that. useless jerks. Time we went for a walk, just us. Seriously, I don't know why this game is putting such emphasis on this group, but that is the biggest death flag I have seen yet. And I have seen quite a few in this game. So we reach the castle. Ah, the divine dragon has arrived. Or should I call you the divine imposter? Morbius says Marnie had no part in this, I'm the only traitor, as Vale appears fully evil. And Marnie is like, oh, you're evil now, oh, I see, damn. I kind of don't like this now, and goes to attack the helmet. I'm going to break that helmet to oh, pieces! come on, don't announce your attacks! Such a bad girl. <laughs> that was obvious. Well, no matter, we have a clone in the Somnio. So the death doesn't really hit hard at all. See, that whole thing with the DLC never has much impact when stuff like this happens. Like, it can still just go back to the Somnial and support her if you want right after this. Well, Morvia goes mad and joins us to fight, and eventually we win, cracking the helmet. Sort of freeing Good Veil and she gives us Mart's ring. However, Sombron appears and goes to kill her, but we jump in the way, very stupidly not using Lucina's shield ability. And Sombron gloats over us now, knowing that we are his other child, while everyone Guess just T poses in the background, not helping us out. And so we actually die. Where I was kinda panicking because, wait, I didn't get all the supports! Don't tell me we control Vale now! No, all the grinding I did with the doggo! No, don't die! But yep, she actually dies. And Somron gets all the emblem rings, I guess off our body without moving close to us. And goes Giga Anaconda, raising Gradlon from the sea. What a shame. Because now it's time for you to say farewell. Farewell? Metal Gear. <laughs> My head! Lady Vale! I don't want her to have control. Girl, just take off the helmet! But Evil Vale comes back, summoning Corrupted, and fights us as Gris and Zephyr leave. Well, we see the flashback to a thousand years ago when Ko killed Somron, but we weren't really evil back then. <laughs> But I wanted to be a good dragon. A 
<laughs> and you will. Someday life will return to you. And this is how for a thousand years, Lumera went to revive us, giving us the blue, mixing Coke with Pepsi. For a weird combination. And now... Where the hell are we? <laughs> However, here we somehow talk to Good Vale and tell her we don't give up. We gotta save the world, so the only way for us to come back is for Vale to revive us as a corrupted. Yep, as a zombie. So back to the real world. <laughs> Good Vale takes over, finally does a smart thing and takes off the helmet, shutting out evil Vale forever and revives us as a zombie. But like, you know, we're completely the same. It's so, like no big deal, right? Oh. The emblems we summon now are communist. Eh, uh, should be fine, right? Also, I gotta ask, when the emblems are not used, do the heroes log off their Skype call in their own world? Like, are they actively thinking and participating in this, or is it a clone version of themselves? It's best not to think about it. So now we gotta go to the emblem rings and summon the evil emblems, where the other characters can pick them up, and there are special dialogue, whether they have one or not for every character. You ready to rule the battlefield with me? Multiple enemies I can handle. Multiple engagement? No way. I'll just hold on to you. So we summon all the emblems and fight off the corrupted, but it's too much for Pepsi's body, and it's vanishing, going to die again. However, the emblems all pull some mystical mumbo jumbo to say, hey, we can do a miracle. We can bring you back to life as the 13th emblem getting rid of the red as now we somehow have our body back wearing the ring lumera wanted to give us for our birthday uh sure i guess perhaps this is now why you seem unique among us i'm the 13th emblem the fire emblem yeah, so I'll be honest, I'm still kind of lost on the specifics of how this works. I guess this world needs an emblem, so Pepsi is this world's one, but also at the same time a real human being. Makes sense? Makes sense. But we can't rest as Sombron is opening a portal to invade the other worlds. However, there's a barrier, and we need to destroy the fell dragon shards that appear all around Gradlon to enter. But no time for that, we got more Somniel, as Vale joins the team. Welcome to the Somniel, Vale. Have some poop. And now a weird thing is that the supports with Pepsi have more meaning since they are bonding with her. Meaning characters get more boosts if they have supports with her. Really? And Pepsi's supports are weird. I mean, Pendrea was like, wow, no way, you're a dragon. Let me pray to you and get your follow account up. Also, by the way, Pendrea is really cool in gameplay since he has a skill which heals you if you wait a turn without doing anything. Which is perfect for Micaiah's giga heal that lowers you back down to one. Nothing to fear. I am used to handling poison. Yeah. Well, Something more bonds with Corrin. Good or bad. It's about freeing your heart. Let me hear you, please. Okay, I'll try. You are the ocean's gray waves. And I couldn't believe it. They mentioned the controversy of the petting face mechanic in Fates and how it was removed in the Western versions. You're always busy. If you tire, I can rub your shoulders or face. Whatever is customary here. Huh? Emblems cannot touch, can they? And rub my face. Is that common in your world? Ah, not common. Not really. Just sometimes. Depending on where you're from. And doing more skirmishes, they tell you about this new Pepsi bond, which is pretty much you can bond with a character that hasn't bonded, and you both get boosts with special attacks, even a super fusion attack together when you stand next to each other. And the character who gets fused, the hair looks stunning, honestly. I say they're completely unbiased, you know, don't look at the avatar. Well, back to the supports. <laughs> oh, come um, on, Vale, you can clearly see no. this is Celestia. It's While Tamara's voice actress probably didn't sign up for the singing part in the contract. Sizzle and crackle on the heat, nothing tastes better than roasty meat, yeah! And Vale's whole anime gimmick is that she loves spicy food. I love spicy food. Telling Clan he needs spicier pickles. Oh, Alfred. You're drenched in sweat. Are you feeling okay? It's so, so spicy. Wait, weren't you just complaining that the pickle wasn't spicy? Kids these days, I swear. Is that all? <laughs> oh, come on, Alfred. It probably so is funny. really spicy. <laughs> Ugh. <coughs> 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 
need one now. Although we probably should keep Marin away from her. Dragon, dragon, dragon! You are a real dragon! Also, remember how Panette scared Ivy. I don't mind. I have accepted that the lifetime of fear I went through in a single day has scarred me forever. Yeah, it turns out she's traumatized for life. I had to tease you a little. Also, what the heck? Violet and the students have their own unique attack? Why don't Camilla and Corrin get one? Oh no, you must be chilly. I love spicy food. Also, I swear, why does Pandreo have to make everyone hell? And with that, I've finally done most of the support! <laughs> finally! Yeah, only the Pepsi one, the characters, but I've done most of the team's ones. Well, time to finish the game, huh? So we head to Gradlon, where the first part is a volcano, with Gris and Zephyr waiting, blocking the shard, which in battle they use to summon meteors onto the field. Also, I gave Jade Selica for some sweet warp Ragnarok, I missed you. Not about to stop here. Yeah! While also realizing Amber with Sorin really sucks. So I guess not all emblems boost the characters like Sorin probably needs someone with more magic. Also, I love Corrin's animations in My HD. Oh yeah, I don't think I mentioned this, but after three turns of fusing, you gotta battle some more to build a charge back up or stand on these blue tiles on the map to instantly fill it up. Man, I really forgot to mention that earlier. So we win and kill them both, breaking the first crystal. And Zephyr kind of changes sides, giving us a radar to access the second one, which is actually at the bottom of a lake. So we needed it after all. And we see her talk to Gris as they die. A family. The love of a daughter or a son. Oh. Aww, she just wanted a family after being alone for so long. So the weirdos and the hounds were her family, as they finally all die. You know, it's incredibly weird how much screen time these four got over the four royals in the story. No, I'm serious, they probably had more impactful storylines in the end. You barely see the royals in the cutscenes now. It's always these four, which is probably why the DLC revolved around them. I guess they were fan favorites. Well, only one for me, who was still alive, but this death doesn't really do anything for me. What sort of experiment is this? I'm going to blast the corn with L Thunder and make it explode. Yeah, I'm never using him. So long, Methuselah! <laughs> also, I gotta say, Zelkov, good thing I didn't ignore you. So in this corner of the map, there's nothing really there. But turns out, Zelkov, over the course of the game, was building a statue to me. He's so mysterious. I am always mindful to leave something unfinished for the next day. That ensures I always have a project, a reason to continue living. Wow, so philosophical. You, you truly think so? Oh well, wow, his voice changed. For... Yeah, so he talks in this enunciated way, and it's strangely addicting. I mean it. Ah, Zelkov, I've been waiting for you. Divine One? I finished my tasks early today, so I came here. I hope you don't mind. I don't mind, but the way you are speaking, do you mean to suggest a deeper meaning? All we're doing is killing time. I deeply regret filling your head with rubbish. Please, don't apologize. Go on. Tell me more about your collection. Very well. What should I talk about next? Ah, this here is perfect. A list of the most mysterious words to emphasize, to suggest a deeper meaning. Ooh, that sounds interesting. God damn, I love this game. Oh yeah, so to get all the supports, Tamara actually opens a shop when she joins, which sells items that you give to people. Which is amusing when I wanted to boost her support, I just buy from her, only then to immediately hand back for some support. Whew, I'm so full I can hardly move. I'm sorry, what? Woof! I swear I didn't make this furry thing up! Ow! So I give more items to people. Whoa! 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 Man, this guy is nuts. Whoa! Yeah! Whoa! Yeah, for real, stop with the alpaca noises. 
That's it, I'm out of here. Well, with most supports done, you can see all the custom pictures the devs made for their ranks, and some are so good, like Etienne can do finger push ups and Amber. Aww. However, before the end, you get this other quest in the Mera's Garden to defeat all these corrupted, and as such, you get this marriage ring, which lets you S support one character. Yeah, the characters can't with each other, you only get one, and so I have to think long and hard. Who do I give it to? And the winner is... Engage. You have become my family. Just um, kidding. I would try to help my mother with her jewelry from time to time, but I was... Well, this cutscene is super so exclusive again, since I so know none of you did this. I'd like you to tell me what you make of this. The Pact Ring? Hmm. There's a mysterious power inside. No other ring has ever felt like this. That's just how it felt for me. Well... That ring and its power are both yours now, Jade. Huh? W what do you mean? Damn, Pepsi is so sly. Also, here you go, since I had nothing better to do on these final days, the characters reacting to bad food. Did anyone try this before serving? The inside of my mouth is all tingly. I did not know pain was a flavor. Also wait, you know how I mentioned waking up is based on the supports? Well Etienne's final support has her giving us muscle bomb after running with her. And waking up, she actually mentions it. it they really do link them together? Also by the way, there are skirmishes in the Fels analog so you can get some more money from there. I thought you might scorn the humorous writing, given how little I smile. No one should criticize you. Everyone knows you cannot judge a person by their appearance. So with Zephyr's hint they find the lake but can't reach the shard. However her radar activates and instead of raising the mountain from the lake, it instead travels us back in time to when there was no lake. Ah, uh, okay. As we see... Oh god, not Coca-Cola! So yeah, this is us at Somron's kid, who was looking for the rings back then. And man, this armor is so cool, I wish that was a skin for us. Hey, wait a minute, weren't we tiny a thousand years ago? We seem to be the same height now. And who should appear as well? Zephyr! The deaths in this game don't mean anything. But she has no clue who we are because she's also from a thousand years ago, and so we have to fight Red to destroy the Shard. Man, it really feels like they ran out of villains here. And this map is cool with three lanes. Gee, I wonder which other game did that. And every few turns, Cola will summon an avalanche, which pushes you back down the mountain, which was really cool managing all the characters, but I kind of wish the avalanches happened more frequently, as it was pretty easy to dodge. Well, we gotta fight Coke for soda domination. Come at me. Or I will come at you. And we win, defeating the crystal, knocking Cola out, and heading back to the present. And any time paradox? Do you think that's going to cause any problems? It should be fine. I do forget everything, eventually. Oh, that's right. Huh, I guess that makes sense. I would like to make one of these children with you. You have a child with me. Please, Lord Sombron. Now is not the time. This is literally that meme. And we see this is how Lumera found Cola in the first place. So I guess we help her find ourselves a thousand. Don't think, don't think about it. Huh, wait. So this entire section was us falling down into the past. Hey, wait a minute, isn't this like Fire Emblem Fate? Well, back to the sawmill and I somehow forgot I left the best Alfred support to the end. Alfred? Uh, what's wrong? Don't worry, Celine. It's, it's just an attack. It'll pass soon. Uh, an attack? Is it your old illness? I was doing so well. That part of my life was supposed to be long gone. Wait here. I'll fetch someone at once. No, stop! What? Why should I? I don't want anyone to see me like this. Not our allies, the emblems, or the divine dragon. I can't let them see this. A weak prince unfit to fight who could collapse any day? If Firene had fallen, or Mother died, or you were lost to us, I wondered, how would I respond? And now this? If things get worse and you have to leave, what will I... How can I... <sighs> hey, I'm not gonna die, okay? 
I'll be Such fine if I stick boy. with my training. And yeah, what's with the deal with the Max Hot Dog thing? Like, it doesn't really do anything. All you do is feed and pet him to get Bond fragments, which you need for Bonds, but that's it? And wait a sec. You know how the waking up is randomized? With the long loading, too. But... There are marriage wake up events? Bro, I'm never getting these. Why is it random luck? No! So we I head to the final that. shard where Vale goes. Let me go in alone. I'll destroy the shard and come right back. What? Yeah, she's like, teehee, I'll be back a sec, and locks the doors with magic, sneaking in to confront the shard, which is guarded by a corrupted zombie Lumera, which is why Vale didn't want us to see this. But Lumera, on the other hand, If that is the case, I am practically your mother as well. You are welcome to call me your mother, should it please you. I'm sure it's fine. It's ludicrous to think you might murder me for a second time. How are you so blind? I still owe you a death for the first one. Die, you little defect! Uh, well, we burst through. How did we burst through the door? The door should have been blocked. How? Oh. Well, we broke through. The Fire Emblem writer's writing that line. And a fight to defeat Lumera, where your team is split up and you gotta move through endless respawning enemies, and it was so cool. Dodging laser beams from the crystal, my controller dying. But we eventually win, and it was funny, I was trying to set up Pepsi to kill her with a bond attack, but I guess I'm just too overpowered from doing so many skirmishes because I needed the support. So the corruption leaves her body as Lumera gives some final words to Pepsi before dying again. And now we can enter the place where Somron is. Help me protect it. Forever. Hmm. Forever. It's a promise then. Don't you have like house cleaning to do in your world, Marth? Or another Smash Bros collab? So this is the final time in the Somnial and I felt kinda sad. I really grew attached to this goofy game, the constant story, Somnial progression. It was so nice and of course Linden is the final cook. I feel the chef's love in this dish. Great, he ruined the mood. Also, it was super weird how even on easy mode, I was so strapped for cash to do anything. Like buying healing items was so expensive, but I guess when you put money into those donation things, they cost a lot. So in the end, I was selling all the items I knew I wouldn't use just to get enough to buy a healing staff. Well, you head to the balcony to reach the final level, and you can also see the rankings of who people used in the fight. And man, my playthrough is easily the most unique one on YouTube. You're all using such different characters! Well, Marth goes, oh, by the way, when the portal closes, all the emblems will disappear, so are we. And we enter, seeing Sombron just chilling, saying how he doesn't want to invade other worlds, but rather find his home world because he was exiled by the enemies there. And he even had an emblem ring He's called... Zero Emblem. A reunion with Zero Emblem. Zero Emblem? Metal Gear. He was then trapped here in this world, sad and lonely like a little baby, with only his imaginary friend Emblem to talk to. But due to the villagers finding and taking care of him, the Emblem was like, Wow, you changed bro, you used to be cool. Making Sombron mad, so he killed everyone, all to find that Emblem and seek revenge on his homeworld. Yet yeah, something out of Dragon Ball Z, I swear. And so he banishes our Emblem, but Pepsi goes, No, you. And with every character you use saying something inspiring, There's a 100% discount on Lady Anna's aid services today. One time offer, no refunds. She summons them all again in a super long cutscene. Maybe 12 is a bit much, huh? And so we just defeat Sombron. Man, that felt way too easy. And it is because he has a snake form, remember? And stands in the middle with a huge attack you have to dodge, just like in the DLC. And he brought villains from the past Fire Emblem games. Not actually them, but the shadow things that use their weapons, I guess. And summons them after waves. And on the first wave, I don't know who they are. You do more damage if you pair the right emblem you have to attack their villain but I legit didn't know who these bozos were so instead just went straight for snake boy and attacked him directly which meant I missed some dialogue and yeah that's the final boss kind of weak I guess because I was over leveled not the greatest fight the DLC boss fight was honestly better gameplay wise and in the end he still doesn't care about his daughters and just wants to see his imaginary friend which he does and he dies and we're done what do you mean there's a bad ending if you die in the final battle? Dear sister, it's time to go.
<laughs> well, cool I guess. And so the portal closed, all the emblems returned to their world as the post-game battle credits roll. With the epilogue showing us Crown, the ruler of Lethos. And Jade writes so many novels and clan tests new recruits for their love of Pepsi. Man, I hope they don't like Mountain Dew instead. And Alfred died, what? But you can't do this to me. I'm not gonna die, okay? So that was a lie. As we see the whole crew, what happened to them? It's mostly pretty generic with the post, post, post game scroll showing things like Yunaka dancing with Sea Doll. Kind of an odd canon ending. And Anna reuniting with all the Annas. The genetics in that family is messed up. With the final cutscene. Come on, whoa, okay, I'm coming, I'm coming. Well, that's it. I got engaged, and man, what a ride. It was actually so good that I avoided all discussion of the game upon release, going in mostly blind to see this. Ah, divine one, you look so shiny when you sweat. And as a celebration of Fire Emblem, yeah, I can see that. Fans of the series will love all the references to previous ones. I guess having all these emblems, it helps if you know them from the games they are in. But on its own, man. This has got to be my favorite general cast in a Fire Emblem game. Usually I only find a handful of characters I like and ignore the rest, but here, every chapter, more and more kept joining that I wanted to use, even some I ignored, but found that I shouldn't have later on. And here's the tier list of the characters for me. Were there any surprises for you? You can pause the video if you want. I'll probably put an ad break here. Some real nitpicks though was not having any voice lines when the characters leveled up. I sorely missed that. Plus the odd customization. You can only do it in the Somnial, not in support, but randomly the main character can change for story cutscenes. It fell all over the place with what was customizable. And Aaliyah Pepsi was actually really great. I loved her voice and how she acted with the goal, solidifying that Fire Emblem needs voiced main characters. It really adds so much to the plot when they react to things. Though, I thought the villains were just kind of okay with so many plot holes. Man, and people call Fates bad storytelling. But then, speaking of Fates, did you see how many things about Fates I found? The petting a character, to feeding them with unskippable cutscenes, the awkward ASMR close-up on characters, the characters randomly cooking for you in between battles and you don't get to pick who does it, so many maps feeling similar, the evil king having multiple wives and kids with each, Man, it really felt like they just wanted to make Fates again, but with a less cringy story, which in turn made a more plot holy story. But I still had so much fun with this. I legit felt incredibly sad in that final chapter. After 60 hours, that I would have to say bye to these weirdos. And yes, I know, that stupid pop song is amazing, okay, I love it now. And after all this, I must say it, I think I love this game more than three houses. Oh. What can I say? I love my trashy JRPGs! I love spicy food. So then, wait a minute. This game was trying to introduce all the old Fire Emblem characters and have these gamblings and RNG where you get the characters from the game. Hang on. Was this game just an ad to get us to play Fire Emblem Heroes? Ah, oh, hell no! Trojan, Ramses, Magnum, Sheik. And a big special cheesy thank you to my patrons, including Commitimus Crime, Coxel Sin, Gerardo Cruz Alvarez, John Portagil, Master Pro, Nera, and Worker B. See, if you two support me with an S rank, your name will be here forever, so join them, link down.